northwest corner. Oh, that's, where that's the, where the nuclear agents, data... Car agencies are along the road. Oh, okay. And, in fact, behind it is all industrial area. Okay, so like Remington Road and that Remington See, right there. at the yeah. corner, northwest corner, is uh, Marshall Field. Oh, yeah, the new Marshall Field. Did you bring the new the, Marshall uh, Field. The Motorola barn? Yeah. See, now, and then my dad and mom were going to retire and build a new home, but then when my mother died... Then he decided, well, I think I'll build anyway. See, he kept 40 acres mm -hmm. on the east side of Meacham Road. On the east, okay. Now, that's, that's where the toll road comes through. Okay. The toll road on Meacham Road in the southeast corner, you see a whole bunch of trees there. Yeah, I, where that barn was. There yes. was a barn there. Yeah. And, so I, that, and the house was there, but then after we moved out, they tore the house down. And they left the barn. Yeah. yeah, and then now the barn is gone. It's gone, okay. Okay, but all those trees, I planted all those trees. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, now we have an aerial photo of the house and the barn, mm -hmm. and you can see all the way up to the Arlington racetrack. You can even see the Arlington Heights racetrack. Oh, wow. And there's nothing, it's just all farmland. Uh, it's all <laughs> so you can see the comparison, but my son has it in Toronto. Uh, what? He's going to get it. But I'll, this I'll is get good. it. Uh, we're going up there in a couple of weeks. Good. Do you know which? Do you know which uh, farm this is? Oh yeah, that's my uncle. That's you know. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I told you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So now, where you know, is this? Now this. What's your uncle's name? John. All right. And you know, and. Uh, See, Howard was his son. Okay. That's my cousin. Okay. In fact, Howard was here last week. We had gone out for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about this with Motorola on their bar. Oh, did you really? Yeah. So now, where exactly was this? Okay, Motorola. You know where Motorola is. Right. Okay, that big office building, the, the tallest the, one. The one they call the tower. That is exactly just about where the barn stood. Now, okay. that office building... You'll see about four big trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, right behind the trees is where the house stood, and that is. When you say behind, it would be which well, direction? Well, would be to the north. Okay, so okay, to the north that, of the trees would be the, where the house was. And now that is exactly where the office building is. Okay. Okay, now the barn here would be a little bit to the southeast. Okay, and that Motorola, those words, what direction are they facing? Um, let's see. I remember okay, this way. Uh, so they would be facing. This, this was on the east side of the barn. Okay, Motorola was on the east yeah, side. See, because the silo I remember was on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And then. So from the toll road, uh, you would see it going west. Okay, so the toll road is over here yes. on this side. Yeah. Okay, let me. Yep. All right. So on this picture, the toll road would be over here. Now, in comparison to the house, then the house is over here. The yeah. house is over. Well, yeah, see, the house would be right here. Okay, okay. So the house is to the right. In the, when you're looking at the picture, the house the right. would be to the right, which would be north of the barn. Yes. And then um, this silo was a cement silo? Yes. And what kind of top did it have? Did it have a... I don't think they ever had a top on You don't think... How come some of these guys never put the tops on? I don't know. <laughs> oh. We had one, and others didn't. Yeah. You, what kind oh, did you have? A rounded one or Just, one uh, like a cone? Like a, a cone. point. A to cone. a point? Yes. All right, so it doesn't have its top off, but it went to a point. Yeah. All right. And what, now this was your uncle's farm. Yes. And his, what was his name? John. John. And what kind of farmer? Did he have cows? Oh, yes, we were all so dairy farmers. So you all farmers. dairy farmers? We were all dairy farmers. We all Holstein? All Holsteins. <laughs> That was pretty prevalent in Schaumburg, oh, mostly yes. Holstein. Everybody had Holstein uh, cattle because they produced more than the other type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and my dad had, had originally had four other brothers. There were five brothers in a row that had their farms. Oh. There was John, my dad, Bill, John, Alfred, Emil, and Edwin. 
and Alfred moved to Elton because his wife died when uh, the last child died. Mm -hmm. I mean, the was child born. was born. And he had three children, and uh, he decided to quit farming and move to Elgin. Mm -hmm. But then the other four stayed farming until they all retired. Mm -hmm. And always in Schaumburg? Oh, yes. Always in Schaumburg. Yeah. And when, you're, when your uncle then moved to Elgin, what did he do in Elgin? Uh, he worked for Elgin Watch for a while, mm -hmm. and then he started his own business of having a uh, butcher shop. And he was well known. In so fact, he's today, back in the business I, again. <laughs> if I still go to Elgin and I talk to some older people that don't even know me, mm -hmm. and I introduce myself as Frizy, and they say, oh, from the Frizy Meat Market. <laughs> oh, well, that's kind of nice to know. Yeah. That's nice to know. Oh, you're writing all, Lavana's writing it down. She's going to oh. ask you. We're going to ask you a lot of questions, I think, about your own farm and then the, your um, your uncle's farms. And okay. And where they all are. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Why don't we just get So this is um, um, John. John, John Frizy's farm. I got it all written down. See, now we, uh, in the early 1950s, we had a friend come out from Chicago. And you might be interested in it. Uh, he was quite a photographer. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, at that time he took all the 8 millimeter mm -hmm. film, and since that we have converted it to uh, video. Mm -hmm. And he took pictures, he came out about four or five years, and uh, he took pictures mostly of Howard, and he also took a lot of pictures, my dad and all the uncles are on it, mm -hmm. harvesting uh, the grain. Okay. Good. And then as the years progressed, you know, uh, <laughs> and the machinery progressed. He took pictures, pictures. As, as that progressed. So you have a copy of this? We have a copy, and we gave it to Motorola. Now, the reason we gave it to Motorola is because a lot of picture, a lot of the film is with Howard, mm -hmm. and Howard was raising tomatoes as he was. Mm -hmm. Howard uh, cut off all his fingers on one hand okay. through an accident. Okay. And then he couldn't milk anymore, so they quit milking. Mm -hmm. And then he started raising uh, tomatoes and vegetables. And so there's a lot of uh, film like that. Okay. Now, Motor, okay. we gave one film okay. like that to Motorola. See, now they have a museum. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. But then, so a copy of that would be real nice for what we're doing. Oh, okay. Because then that would be something we could put at the library, and the library has longer hours, yeah. and people can view it there at the library. Yeah. Whereas at the museum, if they go to the museum, they look, and yeah. they're looking at the electronic side of things yeah. as opposed to yeah. what That's we're true. trying to do. Right. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to do pre-Motorola time. Yeah. And they actually have a, have this picture as an original picture. Yes, so they have Yes. But they didn't know whose farm it was, so we will. I will fax oh. the information to the girl. <laughs> well, the people who are currently there don't know the history. Right. Oh, I know. Yeah, no. they don't no. know. No, they, so we'll send no, them a we, little uh, note back yeah. to her. When I'll we fax told them over. about the film, she went went to the museum one day, mm -hmm. and we told them we had a film, you know, of all the land, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, oh, they just. That we want it. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, they're just like so us we. too. But the purposes of wanting the the reason that we want it are different. Yeah. You know, we're just finding that no one knows who owned what land yeah. or what they did and how they did it, and so that's one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you because yeah. we figure that you know a lot of the people, yeah. and you did the See, work. Now, now we. Uh I don't think we have an extra film. See, we've given a film to each one of our children mm -hmm. also. And, but the woman who makes these films for us just lives here in Algonquin. Okay. And so it would be no problem. So if she can duplicate it, she, that she would be great. It, oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, we don't want to take your last one, that's for sure. Yeah. But if you can duplicate oh, no, it, that no, would be can, great. She can duplicate and we, that. And we label it as to you know who, sure. who provided it, who has yeah. the original. And then if someone wants to look at it and they... And they decide that they're going to approach you. Perhaps they'll approach you on their own. Who mm -hmm. knows? And then that's entirely up to you as yeah, to whether or not you talk to them. Um, we need. We're going to start at the beginning. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you please give me your full name? 
Norman. E. And what does that stand for? Elmer. Pricey. Pricey. Okay. F R E I. Usually people write that, I E. That I, yeah, I know they do. And uh, when were you well, born? Well, I suppose you have the same problem with your name. Yeah. Sure. And that pronunciation. Yes. That's why Presley See, is they, much easier. <laughs> they always call us freeze. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, when were you born? November 5th, 1919. And where were you born? Schomburg. Uh, were you born in the house on the in farm? The, in the house. My dad delivered me. Oh, really? Yes. Well, let's see, I was born in November, and uh, we lived four miles from town, Palatine, and a doctor had come out, had to come out with a horse and buggy, and okay. he didn't make it on time. So my dad delivered me. <laughs> cool. And who were your parents? Who was your father? William. And uh, my mother? mother was Alma, A-L-M-A. And right. what was her maiden name? Lichtart. L I C H. You know how to spell it. Uh, we interviewed um, Ramona. Oh, Ramona. Yes, you. <laughs> so, and I, but I, that's one I do know how to spell. Yeah. And your mother's parents, your mother's father, Herman. And your. Anna. And what was her maiden name? Becker. And your father's father. Do you know Her, his name? Also Herman. Herman Pricey. Mm -hmm. And oh. This is a Anna Becker's birth certificate, baptismal record. August 22nd, 1870. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baptized. Uh, September 4th. September 4th. 1870. 1870. St. Peter's. And her father's name was Heinrich Becker, right? I don't know. <laughs> okay. And Sophie, Sophie or Sophia Bartles, B A R T. Yeah, there is no. Okay, I know, but, but we have it. Okay, yeah. it's on um, page uh, eighty, book two, St. Peter's records, um, entry number twenty-five dash three nine one. Twenty-five dash three nine one. Yeah. Okay. And um, your father's mother. Oh boy, you know, she was died before I was born. And you weren't? I really don't know. You're not sure. You don't know what her name was? You no, don't know don't. her name? Okay. No. I think. Do you know when your dad's uh, birthday was? Or your dad's. Uh, Father, your dad's. Grandfather. What well, do you know when your dad's birthday was? My dad's birthday? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, August 16th, 1889. Mm. Okay. Did because you know that, that Ramona and I are cousins? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. As a See, matter of fact, she couldn't think of Anna's oh, okay. maiden name. Okay. And she said, ask Norm. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> See, my dad, my dad and Ramona's mother or brother and sister. sister okay and her father and my mother were brother and sister oh okay so um who we're looking for oh. william frizy's mother yeah see that'd be herman frizy's wife Okay. Wife. I don't have the Frizies, but I know that they um, got married. But you know what? We probably it can could, go back. It, it could have been Sophie, but I am not sure. But you know what? I'm going to put Sophie question, question mark. mark. Yes. Yes. And that does And that, that will. Um, okay. Okay. 
So are you I've ready for this? Stuff. Yeah. Um, why don't you hold it? Um, oops, sorry. Okay, make it go up. It's August 16th, 1889. And Anna Becker's baptism, September 4, 1870. They were also married at St. Peter's Church. And then we don't know for sure what uh, Sophie, if Herman Frizee's wife's name was Sophie or not. But we can look there. Do you know what... Um, Herman's middle name was, he both uh, middle initials were on both of these? No, I don't. No. Mm -hmm. Do you, where are they buried, these four grandparents? Um, let's see, every, they're all four buried in Chumbrook. At St. Peter's yes. Church? Okay. So, yeah, okay. The Frizies are way on the north, the north driveway. All right. And towards uh, about uh, 100 feet from uh, the west end. Okay. Now, okay. Grandpa Lichtart is uh, towards the uh, eastern end of the cemetery and in the center. Okay. And your uh, grandpa, your grandfather, Lichtart, his farm was where? It was on Roselle Road, mm -hmm. just south of uh, Schomburg Center. Okay. It had About, a pond right at Wood, uh, right at Roselle Road. Was there a pond right there? Well, is see, this actually, the one that we uh, talked about well, yesterday. He, uh, By originally the his farm was where Amo Lichtart farmed. Okay. Ramona Lichtart lived. By the Jewel. Right yes. The okay. And then when he retired, and apparently he must have retired rather young, then he uh, bought a little farm and he had about 10 acres with the farm. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, they just built all the new townhouses within the last year of okay. the 10 acres and there's also a retention pond right. mm -hmm. okay and there's some big poplar trees mm -hmm. okay that those trees were on the north side of his house uh, of his house yes so okay. this is north of mcdonald's north Here of mcdonald's north on the northwest corner of the intersection of weathersfield way and roselle road right and if we look at Ramona Lichthart Myers videotape in tape number two. There'll be pictures of that particular area on the and, tape. And the farm. Yes. And the house and the barn. See that? And oh, and we have pictures of the house and the barn on the first tape of the Ramona Lichthart Meyer tape. See that ten acres was was vacant until about two years ago. Right. And then they started building the uh town the townhouses. Home, townhouses. Yeah. Yeah, they put, they had the regular pond, the yeah. natural pond, yeah. let's say, and then they put a retaining pond in on, yes. the, on the north side of the poplar yeah. trees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Retention. I don't, was, was there a pond there originally or no. did they? No, no, no. they built that no, when they that, did the shopping center. Yes, yeah, that was put in. Oh. Because when Grandpa lived there, you didn't have any pond. No. It was, it was just, uh, just, uh, just a grassy area. Just level land. And the Japs lived behind They lived right behind him. Okay. Their driveway went along the south side of Grandpa's property right. and then went back. And did uh, Paul Rosenwinkel have that farm later, do you know? There was, I think, a Rosenwinkel that no, he had it, but I I'm not, I don't remember no if it was Paul. No. We can find that out. Um, how many brothers and sisters did you have? I had two brothers. The oldest one died when he was about six months, I guess. And what was his name? Irvin. I I R V I N. Okay. And he's buried also in Chamber. And he was born probably around 1913, maybe. And then Arnold was born in 1916. And of course, he died 30 years ago, or almost 30. And this is August 7th, 1998. Yeah. So I'm the only one left in the family. And um, where did you go to school? I went to Schomburg School, St. Which, Peter's. Which school did you go to? Of the one two? on what is now 50, by 53 in Schomburg Road. And how did you get to school? 
I went to school with a horse and buggy. How, well, <laughs> how come you didn't walk? <laughs> well, most, most of the farm children had to walk. Well, not all farm children. Other farm children also went with a horse oh, you and wanted buggy. To face him. Okay. Good. And why did you get to go with the horse and buggy? Well, because my dad wanted us to get home sooner so we could do the chores. Well, what kind of chores did you have to do after school? Oh, when I was about eight years old, my dad put me in charge of 200 laying hens. And of course, I don't know if you know what laying hens. What are laying hens? Lay. Do they just lay down in the chicken house? No, they don't. They sit on a nest and lay eggs. Oh, okay. <laughs> that they want to keep. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my job to feed them, water them, clean the chicken house once a week, and put in new straw on Saturday. Yeah. And of course I had to help with the milking in the evening and also in the morning before we went to school. So if, if you did milking before you went to school, what time did you get up? Well, we got up at 5.30, so it was a long day. Oh, when did you have a chance to eat breakfast? Right after milking. Right after milking? And then we get ready for school. What would be a typical breakfast for you to have? Well, usually we always had eggs and bacon, the things that we sh you shouldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> no, we always had a big breakfast because my parent or my dad, or even my mother, they all worked hard. Mm -hmm. And we had a hired man uh, he always, as far as I know, he was there when I was growing up, and uh, he was a bit retarded, but he was, you know, could very do all the farm work, mm -hmm. and so he was a big help to my dad. And he just lived right with you guys? And he lived right with so us. So it was like an uncle, like another yes, uncle? Yes, sure. Another yeah. adult in the house. Yeah. So, but, you know, we, actually we furnished a home for him. And, uh, so. uh, did he get some spending money? or? Oh yes, my dad gave him spending money. In fact, he even had his own car. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my dad paid him, which probably wasn't very much mm -hmm. at the time because the Depression came in in 1929. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, even during the Depression, um, we were pretty self-sufficient. We always had something to eat. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any extra money, but even like with the chickens, uh, when you have 200 chickens, uh, you know, laying eggs, by the end of the week you have a lot of eggs. But we had customers coming out for years from Chicago, the same people. Right. They were Italian people, and one or two families would come out and they would buy the eggs by the cases. There'd be about 30 dozen in a case, and then they'd take them all back to their families. And uh, of course, we sold eggs for 15 cents a dozen. And uh, my mother would take eggs to the grocery store. Instead of using money, we would trade the eggs for whatever groceries she would need. And which really wasn't too much, but mostly like sugar, salt, things like that. Or some, but my mother canned everything. We had a big garden, and she even canned beef. And uh, we butchered, we butchered hogs, made our, all our own sausage. How, how often did you butcher your hogs? We would butcher about two or three hogs a, every winter. Okay. And you, you would do it all at the same time or over the winter? No, no, over. different period, different periods, yes. Uh -huh. Did you have a smokehouse? Never had a smokehouse. But you know, um, when we, when I was young, our winters would never have a period of thawing like we have now. Uh, once, like in November, once it would start to freeze, it would stay cold and stay mm -hmm. always below freezing. Well, we had, uh, I'll tell you a story about this. Okay. We had a great big box on the north side of our house, and that's where we would put all of our meat, all of our sausages for the winter. and. We didn't have to lock it because nobody would steal mm -hmm. anything. About how big was the box? Oh, it was probably Roughly. about 12 feet long and about 3 feet wide okay. and probably about 3 feet high. Had a lid on it? Yes, with a lid and we could, like a, a freezer. Okay. Like a oh, freezer. Like a freezer? Yeah. 
But like it was a grain, outside, was like a grain and uh, uh -huh. now during the depression, my parents had some friends that lived in Palatine, and he was a carpenter, and it got to the point they had no food on the table. I mean, he had no money and no job. So we had this big house, and my dad says, well, move in with us. So they did, and they stayed for three and a half years. <laughs> and, uh, he became part of the family. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, he built this box, mm -hmm. and then he also did carpenter work around amongst the mm -hmm. farmers if they needed repair work, mm -hmm. and he'd do that. This is the farm that is where the New Marshall Fields um, yes. furniture store is now yes. that you're yeah. talking about. Mm -hmm. The northwest corner of Route 58 Golf Road and Meacham. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to regress back a little bit to school. Mm -hmm. um, what was school like when you went to school? What was your school day like? Well, we had one teacher, one man teacher, and for all eight grades. And the teacher's name was? Was Eggersman. Eggersman. Yes, and we also had, were taught the German language. We had everything in German, also English. We had uh, a period of time during the day where we were taught religion and the Bible. And uh, I think one advantage of having just one teacher, as he was teaching the older grades, we would listen into what he was teaching. And so we just... It was reinforced. Yes, uh, we learned a lot from just listening. Um, and the school building. Think about the school building. Uh, what color was it? It was white. Uh, can you give me an approximate size of how big it was? Just ballpark. Don't have to be. Oh, I would. We would have about forty-five kids in school, so I would say that the width probably was fifty feet, and the length probably about a hundred feet. Um, what kind of heat did you have in the? Oh, pot belly stove. Was it in the front or the back of the? School? The front. And uh, was there a platform at the front of the school where the teacher's desk yes. was sitting up on the platform? Yes, he was sitting, sitting a little bit higher. And what were the <laughs> what were the bathroom facilities like? Well, they were outside. <laughs> uh, did you have a separate outhouse for the boys and a separate yes. one for the girls? Yes. And where did you get the water for drinking during the school day? Well, see, the teacher lived right there. He had his home right there, and so he had a well. And so we, we would have to go out there, and we had a pump and, a, and to get our own water. Can you tell me a little bit about how that was laid out, that area? Because, you know, that's not really been trampled too much. If there are footings and stuff, I'll go over there and take a look. But for the intersection of Rolling Road and Old Schomburg Road, yeah. although New Schomburg Road merges right there, yeah. um, how was the layout of the the buildings for this man's house and his... See, originally, um, Roving Road was just a gravel road. Okay. And uh, so the school was facing, you might say, facing Roving Road. Okay, so I mean, it would be facing east. the front entrance of the school was facing Roving Road. Okay. So we were just uh, probably 20 feet away from the road right away. Okay. And then the school sat back maybe 20, 30 feet. Okay. And then the house was directly to the south of the school. All right. And there was probably only 50 feet between the house and the school. And the entrance to his house faced Rolling Road? Also Rolling Road, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And do they have a barn there too? Yes. Or a shed? And the barn was behind the school. Behind the school. Behind and the how school. big a barn would you say it was? Oh, gosh. It was big enough so that the teacher could have chickens. Okay. So it was probably about 50 by 50. Mm -hmm. And then when you drove your uh, your horse and buggy, where would you leave your we horse and put buggy? Put the horse, horse in the barn. And, but and you then, weren't the only one that drove oh the horse Oh, no, there were buggy. others. There were about two or three other families. Okay. And then at noon, we would have to go out there and feed the horse and give him some water. Okay. And... Uh, and he, a, but he would be out. Of, he would still have harness on, but he wouldn't be hooked up yeah, to the buggy. Yeah, we would just keep the harness on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me how you, how did you actually get there? I know you took. You said you took the horse and buggy, but did you uh, go down Meacham Road to Old Chamber Road and then 
make a, a left, well, or did you no, go back roads? No, see, when I started school, Meacham Road wasn't there. Okay. All we had was Route uh, 72. Okay. So our driveway from 72. Okay. Wait one second. Okay, that's south. That's south. Okay, well, the map and then back. north, and then this is uh, actually it's East Schomburg Road or the New Schomburg, New Schomburg Road follows that at this point, but Old Schomburg Road will go up like that as in present day. And then Route 53 is right here, or 290, the 290 extension is there. And then Rolling Road, and that would be, no, W. Jane is down there. That's not right. This is uh, Botterman's and Fredrickson. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, See, how our, would you go? Our driveway would come from 72. We, oh, almost, right. we had a mile driveway. We had to go past Amo Frizee's farm, and then our farm was north of Amo. Okay. So, you're. Okay, See, so 58, you're, you're, 58 or Meacham weren't even there when I started school. Okay. All right. I'm looking at 1949. Get the, the one that's got the picture on. Go around. This one? Yes, on the back. Oh. Okay, I don't know if it shows on there. Yeah, it does. We're looking at a plat map here. <clears throat> so William. Yeah. So it, Meacham Road ended here. Oh. So, See, Meacham Road ended at 72. So they had, oh. come, they had a mile driveway coming all the way down here. Oh, okay. So they uh, their driveway would have followed pretty much like National Parkway, that new yes. that new road. Yeah. And they would have come south to 50 uh, to 72. 72. And then you then, would have gone east on we, 72. Then we would go east on 72 till we got to Meacham. Okay. See, Meacham ended at 72. Okay. Then we took Meacham south to Schomburg Road, which okay. went east. Okay, on the south side of one of the Redeker farms. Yes. Yeah. Whose farm was that, Fred? Ernst? Uh, Ernst and... Ernst. Uh, Ernst and Fred. Fred. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, and so, their, their father's name was Henry. Okay. So then you would go down to what we consider Old Schomburg Road now, and you would make a left and go east. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are all dirt roads? Oh, yes. Dirt or gravel? Well, there oh, was some gravel. some gravel on Meacham. Okay. But uh, Schomburg was mostly a dirt road. Mm -hmm. Were there any bridges on Meacham Road or on Higgins Road no. that you remember? Any no. little bridges that the guys would have had to repair once in a while? No, no there weren't any. Okay. And in fact, one time uh, we even, as little as the cart traffic we had, a car hit us. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> right on 72, as we were going west, uh, before we got to our driveway, it would go down a hill like this. Okay. Of course, now it's pretty well straightened out. But a car was going to pass us, and as he was passing us, some car came from the opposite direction, so he turned right away, and as he turned, he ran into our buggy. <laughs> but didn't hurt the animal or you? Well, or fortunately, the, the horse took, I mean, unfortunately, the horse took off, but there was a farmer right by the road, and, you know, and he just stood there like this and waved, and the horse stopped. Well, hadn't the, he been there, that horse would have gone around into our driveway, and we'd have just tipped right over. I mean, we could have been killed. Mm -hmm. Dangerous times. What kind of lunch did you take to school? Oh gosh, if I remember, it was mostly sandwiches. And, and do you have any idea what was on the sandwiches? Oh, it'd be meat, mostly meat. I mean, because we always had sandwich. so much of it. And what did you carry your lunch in? Was it a, a bucket? It a, was a syrup bucket. A syrup bucket, <laughs> okay. Yes. Cleaned out syrup bucket. I don't know what a syrup bucket looks like. Is it metal? Yes, it was metal. It's metal and it has well, there a cover. Was no plastic at that time. But uh, as opposed to wood, I was thinking. But um, does it have a cover? Uh, yes. Like so, it would have a metal cover. Sure. So would it, it be, be about like this? You know, just 
big around. Mm -hmm. Like these popcorn cans, but smaller? Yeah, sure. Do it have a and handle it on had, it? It had a, uh, yes, it had a little wire handle. So the cap would just kind of push just on push and stay down. on. Okay. Sure. And then you each would go, to, how many people went to school with you at the same time? About 45. No, but in your buggy, just you? Oh, once in a while we would uh, pick up uh, my cousin at Hamel. And so there'd be four of us. <laughs> four would go at the same time. So, original car. You know, right? my dad yeah. even bought a buggy with two seats in it. I wish we still had that oh, buggy. Gee. <laughs> Just for you guys? Yeah. To go to school. And they, and they had their own horse. That was like a you Cadillac. Had your own horse too? <laughs> yes, a Cadillac of buggies. It, it was, was a horse, just, it was the school horse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then after two or three years, my dad bought my brother and I some saddles, so we rode the horse so that we didn't have to use the buggy. The buggy. And then the buggy so, became the so family kind of, Cadillac. Well, tell me what kind of saddles did you get? Oh, Were they like Western saddles? Yeah. Like you see Western cowboy saddles? Almost like saddles haven't changed that much. As opposed to an English saddle, you know, where oh, it's Oh, we just had the West, Western Western saddle. kind? Sure. Okay. Sure. So when you got your Western saddle, did you learn how to wear <laughs> Huh? No, we didn't. No? <laughs> Go up and round. Go up and pasture and round up the cow. Uh, okay. I had to ask. I just Speaking of pasture, let's go to the farm. Uh, what kind of farm buildings did you have? Oh, we had a big, big dairy barn. See, and originally when my dad, when my dad and mom married, oh, my dad built the house, built a big, big house, five-bedroom home. So your father built that? Yes. Do you know about And I don't know here? why they <clears throat> built such a big home. Apparently they must have thought they were going to have a bunch of kids. But, uh, well, the, uh, the house... I have a picture of our home also. Wonderful. And uh, the house had a huge kitchen, and uh, then the pantry off of the kitchen, and we had a bathroom in our house. Built with it? The bathroom yes, was built with the house? Yes, when my dad built the house, he built the bathroom, but we used all our rainwater. You know, we had two cisterns alongside of the house, you know, in the ground. And we and my dad had a huge tank in the basement, and he had a gasoline engine that would uh, build up the pressure in that tank, you know, and also mm -hmm. pump the water in, and then also build the air pressure, so that uh, when we used the toilet, you know, we had the air pressure to flush the toilet. You're lucky. And uh, <laughs> and he he but the house was built with this. Yes, and then we had two bedrooms. Well, we had then we had the. Uh, well, what do you call it? The living room, you know, next to the right. kitchen. And then we had the parlor. And, uh, well, see, years ago, my parents celebrated all their birthdays, you know, and we, they both came from big families. Well, when my dad or mother's birthday was, we'd have probably 25, 30 people. And so then we would open up the parlor. <laughs> Was that the only time it was really used? Yeah. You weren't allowed to play in there. Oh, we could I, we could go into the living room, you know. Okay. But the back door, we back parlor, we there was no need to go in it. Was there a pump organ or no. a piano or anything? No. 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 Okay. Would you use that back? What about uh, for funerals and weights? Would you use it for uh, funerals or weights? Yeah, or you know, we like never that? had one in our home. Mm -hmm. No, but I know. No. Okay. Uh, but people, never in your house. No, never in our home. But I went to funerals where I went into homes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we had two bedrooms downstairs. When my brother and I were younger, we slept in the back bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then as we got older, we slept upstairs, and we had four bedrooms upstairs. Six bedrooms. And then mm -hmm. a big attic on top of the whole thing. Now, was your attic uh, attic where you could stand up in it? Oh, yes. So you could, oh, you did could you, walk around in it. Did you play up there? We never no, played No, we never there. went up there. It was no. just an attic. So did but your mother, mother use it? Huh? Did your mother use it for anything? <laughs> she was a great saver. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Uh, I liked her. She was. She was. <laughs> you know, when she died, we had 
boxes and boxes of recipes. You know, she'd put them up there and she didn't want to throw them away. She <laughs> might use them someday. She read them. She tried them. She remembered and, them. And uh, I don't know if you know what ground cherries are. What are ground cherries? Well, they would grow in our garden. Yes. And we didn't have to plant them because they would reseed themselves. So they were just all over in the garden. And what did they look and like? It, and you know what a Chinese lantern is? These little uh, paper thin, paper thin. Yeah, they look very similar to that. And there was a berry in there, probably about like this. Like a, a little a cherry yellow, tomato. Yes, but a little smaller. smaller. Little smaller. Even smaller. Yeah. But they were yellow, and mm -hmm. uh, so in the fall, these cherries would drop down on the ground, and we would pick them all up, and then we put them up in the attic to let them dry. Oh. And then later, like in November, before it got too cold, we would gather them all up. And then some evening, the whole family would uh, take the berry out of the... Okay, so you let them dry with the covering and yeah, everything out. Yeah, with the covering okay. See, and then my mother used them for... Uh, oh, she, my mother canned everything. Mm -hmm. And we had such a big orchard. And uh, pe uh, pears... And then she, she would can the pears, and then she would mix these berries with the pears, and that was good. I had my very first ground cherry last Friday. Oh, Where? did you? At St. Peter's Lutheran Church uh. Farmer's Market. <laughs> uh. They were great. Yeah. They, they did have like this little paper thin covering on them, and when you open them up, there it's a cross between like a tomato and a sweet cherry. Yeah. It's like that kind of a, the consistency of a tomato, but the sweet of a cherry. When my dad would be cultivating corn and I would carry the lunch out to him at three in the afternoon, he might find a ground cherry bush. Oh, yes. And that would be my sweet treat. <laughs> Is that what they grow on, a bush? Yes. yes. Sure, just and like how, and so maybe two high. a foot high. Foot and then and they would high. spread out. They would spread, spread out into about a circle like this. Like a, uh, three feet around, maybe. And so this is another example of something that grew naturally in the area, yes. and you took advantage of it being there and actually used it as food. Yep. Yep. Uh, you said pear trees. Did you have any other trees? Oh, we had loads of apple trees. Did apple. you have any snow apple trees? Yes, we did. Yes. And wealthy. Yes. Wealthy was very uh, prominent at that time. We just had all kinds Cherry. of... You know what we did? We would pick all these apples in the fall, and we would, the whole family then again, we'd all do this in the evening, and we would wrap each apple, like all the Sears catalogs, you know, we had all these big Sears catalogs. Okay. We would take a page, wrap the apple in it, and put it in a barrel, 55-gallon barrel, mm -hmm. wooden barrel. And we probably had four or five barrels of apples, and then we'd use those throughout the winter, and mm -hmm. we'd put them in our basement, you know, mm -hmm. the food cellar. When you would uh, get these trees, when you would first plant these trees, because you planted them, right? Oh, they were bigger already when I grew when up. When you grew up, they were. Yes. Oh, okay. Because that was my question was, well, where would you buy nursery stock like that? Did someone come around and were, no, were they selling there's... trees off a wagon, or did you go? No. Um, what's the name of this? This one nursery. Guess they're not too far. I think they're even in Illinois. They've probably been there for a hundred years already, mm -hmm. and that's where farmers would buy their, their apple trees. Mm -hmm. But in Illinois, but out towards the Galena? Well, I think Galena, they were farther to the southwest. To the southwest, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. But see, those trees were big when I grew up, when I was small. So they were probably planted? They were, they were, they were planted before my parents ever got there. Mm -hmm. So your parents bought the farm yes, from they someone did. else? Yes. Okay, so and you said your father built this house, so was there a smaller house yeah. originally on the property? Yes, there was. See, and then there was also a smaller barn. And, uh, of course, my dad, you know, wanted dairy. And so he built on, he kept the old barn, and then he built the huge barn onto it. Onto it. And then we had as many as 30 cows, you know, to milk. Mm -hmm. And how many and horses? We had six or seven horses. Mm -hmm. And and, so, and so the, the horses were in the old part of the barn, and then the cows were, were in the new part. part. Yeah. Uh, your team is of horses. Did you only use two on a uh, team, 
Or did you sometimes have three? Well, sometimes three. Depends on what type of work. If you were plowing, that was hard work. So we put three horses on. Mm -hmm. And what other buildings did you have on the farm besides the what you started with the smaller barn and that was added on to? Yeah. Well, all of our outbuildings, other buildings were all in a row. First of all was our garage for the car. Then the chicken house. And the chicken house was probably 100, 120 feet long. It was a big chicken house. Then came our corn crib. And that was, you know, two huge corn cribs. So that, and also space so that you could drive in, in between. Okay, so, you know, so that, yeah, so and you could, you could unload the corn, you know, from inside. And then we had a long machine shed, all of our equipment we would try to put in. My dad didn't like machinery outside, and of course it would ruin it. Mm -hmm. So we had a big machine shed. And then beyond that, we had a, uh, a place for our hogs. And we'd raised maybe 20, 30 hogs a year. What, what kind of hogs did you have? Oh, Justin gosh. White, Duroc? Duroc, yes, Duroc. Uh, what color were your farm buildings? Red. Red, all of them. <laughs> oh, what about the house? White. White house and red outbuildings. And, and your uncle's who's over at the uh, Motorola, what color, was, what color was his big barn? It was red. It was a red? They painted that one side, and it's yeah, hard to tell it, the color. Uh, it was red. It was red. And uh, and their house, that house was what color? The one at oh, the Rilla Tower. Also white. White. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it, they were just clapboards, clapboard uh, siding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you ever yeah. raise any ducks or geese? Oh yes. Turkeys. <laughs> no turkeys. Any duck or goose uh, story? Always ducks. Every Sunday was duck dinner. It was duck dinner. Yes. Well, what kind of ducks did you have? We had the uh, uh, Muscovy. Musco no, 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 no. We had those brown ones. When we dressed them out, they weighed as much as eight pounds. Dressed, after mm. all the feathers were off. Not male. Uh, Rones, I think they call them. Okay. Speaking no, of Muscovies, we didn't like because they were too dry. Mm. What kind of horses did you have? What color? Oh, mostly the uh, brown. Did and you raise your own? Yes. So, but oh, yeah. you would you very seldom go and buy a team oh, from no. anybody. No, You'd no, always raise your own. My dad raised all their. We also raised all our own dairy cows. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you had a bull. Huh? You, you had, had a bull. Oh yes, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, back to um. Levon's question about you know what kind of horses you had dark horses a uh, particular breed if he raised his own did he have a uh, particular breed not really no he found a horse that he liked and said yes let's make more of this a horse that was big and strong <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of farm machinery did you use the uh, horses with that you remember oh gosh we used it for everything for plowing disking harrowing. Well, it's harrowing. And then harrowing, um, well, after you would put the seed in the ground, mm -hmm. then you would take a harrow with, it had spikes maybe like this, and you put them on an angle, and you'd go over the field, and that would kind of level it. Oh, okay. So it's See, like... And, and also make sure you covered the seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's harrowing. And uh, corn planter, and uh, the planter for... Broadcast seeder? For your... Uh, grain. Wagons. And wagons, oh yeah. So did your father use a tractor? Did he ever a use tractor? a regular tractor? Oh yeah, once they came into being, That's my, my dad bought a tractor. Do you remember about when you got your first tractor and what kind it was? Oh, I would say um, around 1930. International, F-20. <laughs> 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 that was mine. That's what Levon's family had too. <laughs> and then I graduated to an H. <laughs> so would you only have one tractor? Yes. You would only get one yep. tractor? Yeah. And so then you would had. really baby it? Oh, yes. <laughs> did, how, that was used for everything. How long after you got the tractor did you let your horses go? Oh, we kept, uh, he kept some of the horses mm -hmm. for quite, quite a long time. 
like for planting corn, he loved a horse, mm -hmm. a team of horses. And uh, he had a team of horses that really, they were intelligent, mm -hmm. you know, and when you get to the end of the end of the field, you know, they, they were just automatically turned. And so when you were baling hay and moving hay up into the barn, you didn't have to have somebody driving your horses either, right? Did they obey the Did voice they, commands? Oh, Did they know what they had to do? I mean, we used horses to begin with. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But but you still had to be with we them? We still had to use horses, you know. To <laughs> but I, what I mean is, um, did you have to have, when you loaded hay into the loft, how many people did you have to use when you loaded the people? How many people? How many people? Oh, at least four. All right. And what were their jobs? Well, my job was, you know, to take the uh, horses mm -hmm. to pull the rope so that the hay would go up. All right. Okay, and then my dad was on the uh, wagon, mm -hmm. you know, put the fork in to... Mm -hmm. Didn't trust you, eh? I um, wasn't trusted. How old were you when you were leading, when you were handling oh, the horses? I was, I was around seven or eight. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and then, then your we, dad did the fork. And always, my brother and the hired man would be up in the hayloft. Mm -hmm. What was your hired man's name, do you remember? Amo. Amo. What was his last Becker. name? Becker. Becker. I think he was some relative of my mother's. Yeah. Um, speaking of horses and buggies, how did you go to church? Well, I because mean, your mother was going to go along. Oh, we still went with the horse and buggy. You know, when my dad bought the two-seater, we used that one. What about wintertime? It gets pretty cold. Oh, still... we just used a lot of blankets. And... A lot of blankets? <laughs> sure. Any particular kind of blankets or just nice, heavy ones? Oh, we had a horse blanket. You know, the horse... What is a horse blanket? Well, if a horse died, you would skin the horse. And then, uh, of course, you would dry it. You know, you'd, you'd have to dry it first. Mm -hmm. The and, farmer is doing this, you know, right? He doesn't send clean, it out to do clean it. Clean it, you know. And then my mother would sew some cloth on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. On the bottom side. On the bottom. Yeah. So the top the, would be? On the skin side. On the skin, on the skin side. side. On the inside. Yeah, inside. the inside. Oh, that was warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wind wouldn't go through that. <laughs> and um, when you got to church in the winter time, did the horses stay outside? Oh, they had um, like sheds for them, you know, a roof. Right. Yeah. See the. Uh, well, there were a whole line of. Uh, of you might say. Uh, we're talking about St. Peter's Lutheran Church on East Schomburg Road. Okay. Um, they would have all these sheds, and they would be uh, almost built uh, like garages, you know, all okay. separate garages, and then you would drive the horse inside so that the roof would cover him and the buggy would be on the outside okay. and then you would tie him inside. Would these be where the school is now? And, and the new church. And the new church. Yes. So see then you the would drive in and then you would walk up the yeah, incline there to the church. the new church is, that's where all those sheds, sheds okay. were. And the sheds would be north, the, the sheds would line up north to south? Yes. Okay. And after we got the cars, then all the people would still use the sheds to put the car in. <laughs> they <had laughs> so their they space. stayed there a while. <laughs> Force of habit. So each each family had their own little shed. You didn't just go any place. You each one was assigned. Oh, it was assigned. They didn't build it. Could no, they no, no, no. So I it mean, was built, and somebody, then they got assigned. I mean, probably all the farmers got together when they built it, mm -hmm. and they built these long sheds, then, and each one was assigned <laughs> space. <laughs> Think about Christmas inside of St. Peter's Church. Was there a Christmas tree? Oh, gosh, and how? Was there an And why the church Christmas? never burned down, I don't know. Can you tell me a little why you said that? Why? Why did you say They would them? put hundreds of candles on that shirt, on that Christmas tree, and it'd be about 40 feet high, and those candles were all lit. For the entire service? For the entire service, yes. Now, where was this tree at? Where was it physically located? Right on in the, the side of the, uh, by the altar. To the, on the north side? No, it would be east or west. 
No, no, no to, well, the, yeah. to the it, north or usually south. Usually on the north side, north, north, north side of the altar. So it'd be the northeast corner of the church. How did they get the tree in? It was so a struggle. Was, it was a struggle. You'd have to tie the limbs, you know, and then you just go right through the door. Of course, the doors were wide. Mm -hmm. But and this would but be it, something that it would take 15, 20 men, you know, to bring it in and then to set it up. Mm -hmm. And they would keep it there just for the Christmas service. Usu no, or that Sunday. Usually after New Year's, it was taken down. Okay. <laughs> but oh, what <laughs> any, a fire any, hazard! Any fire prevention? None. Precautions? None. I don't think they even had a bucket of water over there. <laughs> so I remember our church when we first, when we first came over here. You know, we moved over Stunning. here in 1956. We were still using candles at that time, and my gosh, all all they had was a couple buckets of water sitting there. <laughs> and you know, when I think about you it. <laughs> OSHA, if only OSHA knew. <laughs> there was no OSHA at that well, time. Where would they get this tree? Where oh, a lot of times uh, they would just get it out of the woods. Mm -hmm. There were so many woods around. Mm -hmm. And you had a, did you have a wood stash over at uh, uh, for, the Forest Preserve? Did your yeah, family we, have a place where you go? You went and cut? In Elk Grove. In Elk Grove? My, my dad had a... Air you know, there again, you were assigned a certain area, mm -hmm. and you could cut the trees, mm -hmm. and which we did. Did your father ever tell you stories about an Indian living in a teepee? No. No. <laughs> Ken Sporlater said, no such thing. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, he said, no such this thing. This happened when my dad was probably 10, 11, 12 years old, uh -huh. so it was long before oh, the time. Okay. That's why I asked All right. if yeah. his father had said anything. So, now, when was your dad born? My dad was born in 1896. And what was your dad's oh. name? My oh. dad's name was William F. Thies, T-H-I-E-S. Yeah. Yeah. See, so he was six years younger than my dad. Right. So how often would you go and cut wood down in your wood in your wood uh, oh, we plot, do, parcel, whatever you want to call it? We'd usually go in the fall, mm -hmm. and then we had bring the logs back on a wagon, mm -hmm. and then we had a uh, oh a big circular saw, you know, and well, and I gave my son one of our saws, you know, where there's two handles, one on each end, okay. and about six feet long, and you. And it had real saw, thick teeth, real, real long teeth. Teeth are about like that, mm -hmm. and you you had to yeah. saw it like that, and mm -hmm. then of course we had to split it by hand. Mm -hmm. But I gave that saw to my son. <laughs> now you, how often, how many trips would you make? Oh, probably half a dozen. Half a dozen, and you would you do that? That's what you're doing, like in fall, in preparation for winter time, right? Oh yes, right? we get enough for the whole winter. And, oh, so you wouldn't have to go back over the winter unless oh, no. you really okay. No. And then no. you just kept your wood pile right outside the no. kitchen door? No, Where we, did you put uh, your wood pile? we had a separate building for the wood. Mm -hmm. Once we split it, then we would take it inside the building so it stayed dry throughout mm -hmm. the winter. Mm -hmm. So what you cut, you used that winter? Oh, yes. So sure. not like nowadays where they say wait for a whole year before you use oh, your wood? Oh, well, we, you know, we always had a reserve in the building. Mm -hmm. So you would use what you had from sure. leftover from the last time you cut, right. which could have been a whole year earlier. Yeah, that's right. And how was the wood used in the house? Was it used for the furnace or for the kitchen stove? Both. Or? Furnace. Oh. Furnace. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, see it with the furnace. Uh, well, actually, we had another little, like a pot bellied stove. Mm -hmm. Except it was, uh, well, it was stood about this high, okay. and it was probably this big around, and then you there were you there was openings in the top, and we would put wood in there and burn the wood, and on the outside of that little furnace was our water for hot water, mm. and that's how we heated our hot water. So it was like a double wall. Yes. Yes. And then whose job was it to keep the water in there? Me. <laughs> no, we. The, the water was in there automatic, you know, on the outside of that little... But I had to keep uh, putting the wood in there for that mm -hmm. so we'd have hot water. So the water was automatic because of the little setup that your father had with... Yes. Uh, so that was cistern water? 
yes. that was there. Yeah. And See, it wasn't that, drinking water. Drinking mm -hmm. water we had to carry into the... So that water you would use for bath water? Yes, bath and and bathroom. Okay. Did you have a bathtub in your yes. bathroom? Yes, we did. A porcelain tub? Yes. Yeah. Boy, when was this house built? When did when did you well, build this house? My, what year, my, do you think? Let's see, my parents, I think, were married around 1908. Okay. Yeah. So, my, so right he around the there? House, right he put the did, the so he, did he have electricity then? Oh, no. So he didn't have oh, electricity. No. That's why he used the gas engine for the pump. Yes. Uh -huh. And then when did, do you remember when electricity came into your house? Oh, sure. That was about seven years old. And, and exa what were the mechanics? How did they so go about... So that would about be 1926, 1927. 26, 27, yeah. When, what were the mechanics in actually getting electricity to your house and inside your house? What? How did we... Where did it come from? Yeah. The, did a crew come? Oh, and the, the electric uh, company brought the line in from Route 72. Okay, and went and then that it whole mile went north, oh. and then my uncle Emil, you know, came first. Okay, and then they extended the line to our home. Okay, and then yeah. when they got the line to your house, then how did they get it into the kitchen and into the parlor? Oh, well, then we had an electrician. So then your responsibility yes. was to get the electrician, and that's yeah. when he put the circuit breaker, yeah. uh, I mean, fuse, box, fuse box, fuse box. Yep. And hook everything. up to exactly what your father wanted mm -hmm. to have hooked up, and to the barn. Yes. Was oh, yeah. the barn hooked up before the house was? Oh, I don't or about the same? About they the would same, come in at the same, same time. time. Sure. And you had a yard light. <laughs> yes, a big yard light. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that they See, can now make we, a mile trip to the we light. We had, you know, <laughs> now in the barn we used kerosene uh, lamps, okay. you know, lanterns. Now in the house. And why my, why the house never blew up, I don't know. But when my dad built the home, way back in the basement, the last, the last room in the basement, they had a chemical, um, oh, about three different tanks, and you would mix chemicals together, put some water with it, and that would form a gas and then we had fixtures in the, throughout the whole house, and you could just light it. And that's how we yeah, had our light. Gas lights in the gas house. Gas light in the house. But why that in the back room never exploded and blew the whole thing up, I don't know. Did we save any of those fixtures? No. 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 See, when we got so, electric, wow. <laughs> when we got the electric, they took the old fixtures out. Yeah, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And but so know. whose job was it to do all that mixing? Did you ever have to do that oh, mixing? Oh, no, no, no. That was so that was your I, father. Boy, I, my, we were told, don't you ever touch that. That was my dad's job. But, unbelievable. Oh, but unbelievable. There, you figured there were three tubs. There were three, three different tanks, mm -hmm. and you put three different chemicals together, mm -hmm. and then you mixed it with water. Mm -hmm. See, In like a fourth, in a... Yeah. Some then, kind of a pressure and tank. And then there was something. another tank where all the gas fumes would go in. Mm -hmm. And that was all under pressure. Now, and, did uh, your other uncles have this also, or were you the only ones? I don't know. I don't remember if any of them had it. Mm -hmm. Not too many people had that type of lighting. Mm -hmm. So where but, would you know, these lights... All you do is strike, would... a, strike a match and, and, yeah. and... Oh, it was just almost like electric. So was this always coming out? If if you didn't have the match, oh, no, no, it was no, oh, no, you so had somebody to, had to say, you had to "I'm going to turn this on and, and then do it." Yes. Okay. Oh yes, you had to turn it. Wow. All right. Yeah. And uh, what would they use? They would use a regular, just a regular three-inch map, match. a farmer's match. Sure. Okay. Sure. And um, and these would be lights that would be above a dining room table. Yeah, be just um, uh, like a fixture in our in mm -hmm. our kitchen here. How often would you use it? Uh, would you use this this kind of gas light? Oh, every, every day, evening, every, every day. evening. Oh yes, every evening. I'm sure, as soon as it got dark, you would. Light. Would there be? So was you there never one? had a study by kerosene light. I never did, oh. never did. Mm -hmm. See, and of course, I'm when, sorry, I interrupted. When we were just home, uh, we just used the kitchen. We, yeah. Only yeah. in the kitchen. And you had this gas lamp in your kitchen too. Huh? Uh, you had the gas lamp in your oh, kitchen. Yes. Oh sure. So it was a hanging. It was a hanging fixture, and it, it just lit up the whole room. Mm -hmm. 
See, and our kitchen was so big that, you know, we just lived in it constantly. Mm -hmm. What about in bedrooms? Did you have this light in your bedrooms? Yes. Throughout. So every every room the had upstairs, at least one. Upstairs didn't have it, but all the all downstairs, downstairs, downstairs ones did. Downstairs ones did. Yes. So all the downstairs had at least one of these fixtures yes. that had this these gas yes. jets. Now, right. were you allowed to light the no, fixtures? No, no, no. So that was always an adult thing. My dad, mom or dad. Okay. Yeah. No, I never. No, we weren't allowed to do that. Right. And this would no. never be outside the house, though. You didn't have a light outside no, the no, house that was no, lit like this. No, just, so then then you would use your kerosene, kerosene lantern. lantern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. See, and I remember, gosh, when we got the first radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, then we had to have an antenna that stretched from the house to the barn, you know. Mm -hmm. to so did you that go, we could receive the... the does it, did you go buy the radio at a store and bring it home? Or yes. did you get it, you know, you did, do you know where yeah. you bought it? I don't do you know. know where they got I it? have no idea. Okay, just taking this one step farther, where did you do your shopping? With Palatine. Palatine. Mm -hmm. What and were some stores that you would... Shoppy was the name. They were the owners of the grocery store. And uh, they had everything. They had clothing. They had so it was like a general store? It was all general store. How did you spell that? S-H-O-P-P-E. Okay. There were two brothers and a sister that owned the store. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you would go into the store, you would give them the list, and then they would go around and mm -hmm. get it for you. So was the store a, like a huge room, one big room? Oh, it was big. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was right in the middle of Palatine, right, right downtown. So that would be like where Meacham Road is and um, well, Palatine Road, or? Okay, from Palatine Road, it was one block north. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, what was the street that went north and south? Oh, okay, you know where Meacham. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Plum, it's, Grove and, it's Plum Grove and Palatine. Yeah, right. right. Okay, it was a second street west of Palatine. West of there. Up, okay. uh, Plum, oh, Grove, Meacham, Road. Or Plum, Plum Grove Road. Plum yes. Grove Road. Okay. And one block north of Palatine Road. And it was on the west side of the street? It was in the south east, southwest corner. So it's about where the train station is? Yeah, right nearby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the okay, but they had a huge, huge building, mm -hmm. and it was general merchandise. It, it wasn't food stuffs, was it? Oh, food, food. Oh yes. Like, oh, it had that. everything in groceries. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Did you ever shop in Roselle? Did you ever go down to Roselle? No. Well, we go to Roselle only because of the uh, to grind feed. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad. You know, for the cattle, mm -hmm. and there was a big mill in Roselle. And so that's the only time we go to Roselle, but we didn't do any shopping. Mm -hmm. What about Ben Hart's store at um, Meacham and Irving? Did you ever go to Ben Hart's no. store? No. We uh, would go to Gieske's store occasionally at the hardware, the hardware. The hardware store. So if we needed any. And where was that in Roselle? Uh, on Irving Park Road, at the north side of Irving Park in Roselle, uh, where. Gorski's is in 1998, and condominiums will be built there within the next few years. Okay. Yeah. See, they were just east of Roselle Road. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, well, do you remember the explosion they had there? It blew the whole place, uh, place apart. Yeah. In fact, it killed someone. It killed someone. Of the Gieskis. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Mrs. Gieski was crippled and herb died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did you take your mom? <laughs> oh, I'm. No, no, that's here. right. But You're if, free. when you would um, go and do these errands, did you always did you tack it on with other things too? Like if you're going to go to Palatine, would you do a lot of things all in that one day? Would you oh, yeah. do your regular uh, work errands that way too? Well, really, you know, there was no need really for us to go to town. Mm -hmm. Just we, when you needed basic supplies. Just the basic supplies, which my mother really needed, mm -hmm. and right. my dad. Uh, didn't really need anything unless you needed some overalls or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then my she mother led me to that question, where did you get your clothing? Like over at Shoppy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would did your mother they? go into store by herself? Would she drive a, a oh, horse and buggy and go car, by herself? Oh, once we got a car, she learned how to drive. Oh, okay, so she would take the car, but oh, she yes. wouldn't take a horse and buggy by herself? I don't think she ever did. Mm -hmm. No, I think my dad would always. So somebody would always go, go sure. with her. Yeah. Um, where, did you, where did you take your milk? Well, we uh, they came out from Chicago mm -hmm. with the 
big truck, mm -hmm. and we would take it to the corner of Meacham and 58. Meacham and 58. Which corner? In the uh, corner that we lived. Oh, Northwest. where Northwest the corner. nuclear data yeah. company See, the, was, uh, or where uh, Marshall Field is now. Yeah. Okay. See, and all my uncles would bring their milk there also. Mm -hmm. And did you have a milk stand, a platform no. there? No. No. We, Just uh, loaded from the wagon? We had a, like a flat uh, wagon mm -hmm. with all our milk cans on it. Mm -hmm. And then we would just load it right into the, uh, into the truck mm -hmm. and in cans. Mm -hmm. um, what dairy? Do you, know, do you remember the dairy? Is it a Borden or a Headlands uh, or? Ryder. Rider. Rider. R. R. I. E. or E. I. I don't okay. know. D. E. R. D. E. R. And they were out of Chicago. Yes. Yeah. And they would come every day. Every day. And what time would that be in the daytime? Oh, it would be about seven thirty. Oh, morning. seven thirty in the morning. Yeah. Where did you keep your milk cool? Oh, we had a. Uh, oh, it was probably about three feet wide and about twelve feet long, and it was always filled with water. It was. Just the height, just below the height of the top of a milk can, okay. and we set all our milk cans right in there. Mm -hmm. See, when we milked our cows, we would put it through a strainer so that you know it'd be clean, and then we put it right in these milk cans. And as soon as the can was filled, we'd put it in the water and mm -hmm. let it cool. And was mm -hmm. there uh, cold water constantly running through there? No, no. So you knew what level to put it at. Yes. Or and then you just keep putting your cans See, in. See, we, uh, we had a well right nearby there and a pump. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that water was really cold. Mm -hmm. And so that milk would cool mm -hmm. quite how rapidly. Did, how did you pump the water? Was it manually or did you have a gasoline engine? Gasoline or? engine. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. how, how many um, cows did you have milking? About 30. About 30. And then how long did it take you to milk? It would be three people, right? Three, three people three usually, people. sometimes four. Okay. You know. And, and how long would it take you to do that? About those? an hour. About, and you did it by hand? By hand. And then when did you get the milking machines? Not soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for an editorial comment? Does that give you a hint that that's not a fun job? It's not, you know, it's not fun. It just takes so much you time. You know when right? my dad finally got a milking machine when my brother and I started at high school and we weren't there to milk? It put a new priority, put a on, machine <laughs> priority on it. Speaking of high school, where did you go to high school? Oh, thank you. Ray. Okay. Um, were you the first ones from Schomburg to go to high school, or was there another one, Elias? Ponsky. Ponsky. Was he the first one, or do you know? Well, see, he was a couple years older, Yeah. so he was probably the first one. The and first person in Schomburg to go to high school? Is that, that what you're saying? That went to Palatine High School. Palatine oh, that went to school. Palatine High School. Yeah. Okay. See, now Ramona went to uh, Lombard. Yeah, to Glenbard. Or high Glenbard. Glenbard. Yeah. But um, from grade school, I was the first one from my class. Well, no, I shouldn't even say that. My brother, uh, well, see, my brother went to business college at, you know, really. High school wasn't that important. Right. When my see my brother was almost three years older, so he went to business college for two years. Well, this, then when I came at? along, what business college? Downtown? Columbia, 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 Chicago. In Chicago. He went there for two years, for three. And he would go back and forth every day on a train. At the Roselle train or the no, Palatine, Palatine train? Palatine train. See, and then when I came and graduated from grade school, then it. Then the high school was more important. So then I and John Rowing, I think we were the only two then from our class that went to high school. But he went to Arlington. See, he lived farther east. Okay. And he had to go to Arlington High School. Yeah, so he was on, he was in Elk Grove. He was just Township. on the edge of Elk Grove. Mm -hmm. And so he had to go to Arlington. Right. Mm -hmm. So and you and Ray Teese rode together. Who drove? Did you have cars? Oh, I mean, you were 14 years old. Did you have a car? Did you take a buggy? My brother. Your brother drove? Then, you know, then decided, after he went to Columbia Business College, then oh. he decided he better get a high school education. So they gave him some credit, you know, for being in 
Columbia Business College, right. so he didn't take, I don't know, the first or second year. And then he drove. We had a Model A Ford in high school. And what color was it? Black. <laughs> that was only black. <laughs> What's your color choice? Black, black, or black? <laughs> and where did you where did you buy it? In Arlington Heights or in Palatine? Probably Palatine. And you bought it brand spanking new? No. You bought it used? A used one. Uh -huh. But it was in good condition. So. Do you know how much money you spent? Did oh, they talk gosh. about it? Probably 500, 400. Uh -huh. Okay. And after you graduated? Well, gosh, probably not even. Well, I suppose. You know, in 1939, I bought my own first car. I bought a Plymouth Deluxe, which was a four-door Plymouth. Paid 875 for it. And where did you buy that? I bought it in Arlington Heights. What color was it? Black. <laughs> <laughs> So now tell me this, this where was the sense. closest gas station? Where did you go to get your gas for your automobile? Right on our farm. We had our <laughs> gas delivered. Oh, you had your gas delivered. <laughs> okay. Gotcha on that one. <laughs> but who would know? Um, so then how often would you get your gas delivered? Do you, when you would make a call and say, my tank is getting low, can you deliver it? Yeah. We'd and then call. a truck would pull in. Yeah. And, and who, who, we, what, what who kind of gas did you... Yeah, who delivered it? Do you remember? Who? Who? Selick. Oh. From Brazil. Right. Yeah. He had all the farms around. Texaco gas. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, you would just pay, you would have an account with him? And you would just, oh, sure. you know, pay him? Sure. Or you pay him right then, or you pay him when you Whatever. go into town yeah. or something like that? Yeah. And then what was gas, what did it cost about? 15 cents a gallon. A gallon. And 12, it was 12, 12 to 15 cents. And what kind of octane are you talking about? Oh, probably around 75. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I would have thought that it was real high octane. But oh, no, no. So 75? No. a lot of lead in No, it. see, we, uh, see the cars, the compression that they were building at that time, they didn't need the high octane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 75. And then this was just in a drum that was up on some stilts, Yeah. this gas? And oh, then, yeah, we, so you used gravity to fill the, your... Uh, but wooden horses, you know, mm -hmm. and then we put the big tank on it. Okay. So yeah. it was just really gravity that... It was gravity fed. Fed, sure. okay. We'd pull up there with our car and fill her up. Or, and you would <laughs> use that for your tractor? And, and the tractor. You, and you would use it for the gasoline for your pump, your water pumps? Yes. So if that ran down, that... Whose job was that to fill that up? To have to go and fill up the pumps in the house, the gas... Oh. For the Could water. Anybody? Either I or my brother. Sure. Okay. Right. Sure. After you so, graduated from high school, uh, did you, after you graduated from Palatine High School in 1938, uh -huh. uh, did you continue your education? Yeah, I worked for a year. You did? Where did you work? Yes, I worked at Teletype in Chicago. And so you on Oakland Teletype Avenue. On the north uh, side on... Um, Oh gosh, it was so long ago. What was it? Was it in Chicago or was it in Niles? No, no, in Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. We got off at Clyburn. Okay. And then we walked north. We walked from the station, we walked north on Wrightwood. 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 It's no longer there. But I, we know they, where in it fact, is, though. Uh, after the war, I think they moved everything to California. And what did then, you do for them? What did you, what kind I, of work? I worked on the lathe. And, uh, a metal lathe or wood lathe? Metal. And uh, I was doing piece work and I was doing, making quite a bit of money. See, I was trying to save some money for school. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the University of Illinois for a year. And uh, so by then the, the war was coming along and they said, well, if you go back to school, you're going to be drafted right away. And uh, so then I went back to teletype for a while. Well, then then pretty soon my deferment was over and away. Mm -hmm. So then I enlisted in the Air Corps. I didn't want to be drafted. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got so close, I passed all my physical exam. I passed all my uh, written tests for the Air Corps. I got my draft notice. <laughs> 
uh, to appear in two days, uh, okay. and I wasn't sworn in in the Air Corps, so I called the commander. I says, I've got my draft notice. I says, but can you swear me in for the Air Corps? He says, come on in right away. <laughs> so I did. So I called the draft board, and I says, goodbye. I'm not coming in. <laughs> so what did you do for the Air Corps? Well, I flew. Mm -hmm. I was flying, and uh, then I got food poisoning. Mm -hmm. I was in Texas, western part of Texas, mm -hmm. Fort Stockton, and I got food poisoning, and I was in the hospital for 10 days, and they said, no more flying for you, because my stomach couldn't take the flying. Mm -hmm. So they washed me out, and then they said, well, we don't know what to do with you, so finally they sent me to the radio school in Madison, and I went through that. It took me about six months. And my wife was with me all that time. We were married before I went in. Okay. And uh, she was with me in Texas also. And uh, so then I was ready to ship out from Madison to go on for more, some more school. And they didn't call my name. And there were th three of us. We were always together mm -hmm. from the very beginning. And they didn't call either one of our name. So the sergeant checked and he said, oh, you're going to stay here as instructors. So I had the Battle of Truex the rest of the war at <laughs> Truex Field. <laughs> Pretty good. So Pretty good for you. you. You mentioned your wife. What was your wife's maiden name? Or what is your wife's name, including her maiden name? Well, if you've read the papers for the last three weeks, we were on the front page for about a whole week. Bussy. Bussy. <laughs> and what is her first name? <laughs> Christine. Christine Bussy. And do you have any children? Four. And could you give me their names and their, at least their year of birth, if you can think of it? Oh, I've got the year of birth. I not oh, just from memory. Give me, just give me their names. Oh, Joanne is the oldest. She was born in Madison. And uh, she was born, let's see, 1944, maybe, 45. And then uh, came Jerry, and so he was born around 40. Let's see. By then I was out of the out of the service, and we lived in Lake Zurich. And uh, so he was born when we lived there. So that was about 46, 47. And uh, then uh, my mother died. So then my dad asked us to move in with him on the farm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, actually, yeah. And then we, the next one was uh, Jimmy. And he was about six weeks old. He was born, so what did I say, 47, so around 51. And he was about uh, two months. And my wife was feeding him. And she says, he's not breathing. And I said, oh, he's probably just holding his breath. And he wasn't. He died just like that. So uh, we had an autopsy. We, you know, the doctor was confounded because yeah. we had been, he had been to the doctor just a couple of days before. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure, everything was fine, and you know, looked normal. Yeah. And when the doc, in fact, we called the doctor. You know, uh, he didn't live that far from us, mm -hmm. so we called him immediately, and he said the only thing that he died could die of would be a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so we, we said, well, I, want, I wanted an autopsy. I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And here we had a, uh, a professor from the University of Chicago, children's professor, I mean, uh, children's doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said in all his, he was probably about 60 years old, he said in all his lifetime, he had only seen about five or six cases like that and the wall of his stomach was, too, of his heart was too thick. It was almost like an adult. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, every one of them will die of a heart attack because there's not enough blood going through his oh. heart. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, then we had two more children after that. We had an, uh, Randy. He was probably born around 54, and he's a paramedic. And uh, and our youngest daughter was born around 57, mm -hmm. and um, she's a uh, midwife. Mm -hmm. 
And then what is her name? Uh, Pam. Pam. And we have nine grandchildren, and they're all on the piano. They're all there. on the piano. <laughs> when you were in Lake Zurich, you were you weren't on a farm in Lake no, Zurich. No, no. You were no. in a house in Lake in Zurich. In a house. And yeah. what kind of work were you doing then? Well, when I came out of the service, and I wasn't going to go back to to school, I wanted to be a horticulturist. I mean, you can tell. Right. <laughs> and. Uh, so by then we had a child, and I just didn't want to put the family through all those years. And so uh, I got out in March, and all these millions of guys coming home from the war, and all the all the uh, everything our whole economy was geared on the war. Mm -hmm. Well, when the war ended, so did that. So there were no jobs to be had, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so my brother-in-law was a milkman. You know, at that time they delivered milk, of course, now they're starting again. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, well, why don't you take the vacation routes for the summer? And I did, and I enjoyed it. So then the last guy that I took his route, he was going to retire, and uh, he says, what are you going to do when you're through with the vacation routes? I says, I don't know. I says, I might stay here. He said, well, instead of doing that, start a laundry and dry cleaning route. He said, you make yourself a lot more money. Well, there was a, we lived in Lake Zurich, and there was a plant in Barrington, big laundry and dry cleaning place. So I went there, and I started my laundry and dry cleaning route in Barrington Hills. I don't know if you know Barrington oh, yes, Hills, but it's yes. a very exclusive area. Well, I did that for 26 years. <laughs> uh -huh. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. And so you were able to do that even when you moved back onto the farm. Yes. Yeah. So that worked out real well. Yep. Yeah. And it then we moved from the farm, we moved over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, But then a sad thing happened. The owner became an alcoholic, he became a gambler, and in three, four years he filed bankruptcy and that was it. Then he killed himself. Ooh. So then mm -hmm. I... Now what do I do? A new, now you go into a new <laughs> career. Second yeah. career. But Mid here I'm 52 years old, and wherever I go, and you have to fill out, you know, how much you make, or made. Yeah. Oh, you're, you've made too much money. You know, we can't mm -hmm. hire you. Yeah. You're, you're not going to make this kind of money here. No. I thought, that's ridiculous, you know. You just want to be working. Huh? You just want to be working. Yeah. Right. So then a friend of mine finally said, uh, oh, then I became a uh, store furniture or a furniture salesman. And I started in the fall, and I liked it, and I was making good money, mm -hmm. you know, sell all kinds of furniture. Yeah. And uh, But when spring came around and I looked out the window, I said, I can't stay in here. I have to get outside. <laughs> I've been outside all my lifetime. <laughs> So then a friend of mine says, well, why don't you drive a ready-mix truck? I says, never drove anything that big. He says, well, learn. <laughs> and I did. And, and you drove one. Did you, did you drive one? I did one? that for 16 years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What company did you work for? Meyer. Meyer? Meyer? Yeah. And he told me who, who to see in Des Plaines. That's where their office mm -hmm. was. And the guy was on the phone. And so I waited for him. And uh, when he got through, I said, well, I'm Norman Frizey. He said, oh, you're hired. I said, you don't even know me. He said, I just talked to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so it was on the phone while you were hovering. <laughs> Pretty good. I happen to know somebody that works over at Meyer now. Oh, yeah, He works oh, in their good company. Uh, uh, credit department. Oh, yeah. He just started there. Yeah. And after many years, it will be him. I enjoyed it. So you drove one of these big trucks. Yes, uh -huh. Don't you think that's always a challenge to, you know, put the truck where they want it. <laughs> and that sink into the ground. <laughs> oh, that happened many a time. <laughs> I'm sure we'd rather forget about those. <laughs> well, what were we, we were talking about? Oh, and now, then I retired now, 11 years ago. And, uh, well, for two years, I worked at Sherman Hospital in the emergency room as a volunteer. And I enjoyed that. You know, when I went there, this woman says, well, where do you want to volunteer? I says, oh, any place. 
She says, we can't get anybody that will work in the, in the emergency room. Oh. oh. I said, oh, I'll, be a tough I'll work there. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, you soon. know that you can help people there. They really well, need it. And, you know, I was helping the doctors. I was helping the nurses. Mm -hmm. And after two years, I was doing as much work as the aides were doing, making 10 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And I said, what am I doing this for? If I'm going to work, I might as well make some money. Mm -hmm. So then <laughs> I saw an ad for uh, a driver, you know, delivering truck parts in mm -hmm. for Huntley, uh, international trucks. But I had seen the ad about a month before already, and I thought, oh, well, they probably got somebody. Mm -hmm. But I went in a way and filled out the application, and the guy looked at it, and he says, can you start tomorrow? I said, sure can. <laughs> Good for you. So that, now you're doing that part-time. I've, I've been there for nine years. Nine years and you do it part-time though, right? I work Monday through Thursday. Monday, okay, so it's and a I work week. about seven hours a day. No, it's not. And you're I'm outside. Okay. And you I'm get outside. to meet with people oh, all the time. I meet people. And, uh, of course Too bad he isn't a people person. Oh, no, he's not a people person. You can't, <laughs> no, he's not a people person at all. You can't tell that. So then... Oh gosh, the route. I had I would travel from Wisconsin all the way down to Oswego, which is past Aurora, and then Rockford and DeKalb. Cover that all in one day. Ooh. And so I was putting in eight, nine, ten hours. Mm -hmm. Well then they got another driver that took the north end and I took the south end. See the business was getting bigger all the time. Mm -hmm. So then they said, How would I like to go into Chicago? They were getting more and more customers in Chicago. I said, oh, I don't like to drive in Chicago. But I knew Chicago. I could go any place in Chicago. Nobody else knew knew the area. So I took that and uh, did that for about three years. And I'd go down as far as Indiana and all over in Chicago. And then last summer I developed a, a hip problem. So then I quit. And uh, I still have a little bit of a problem, but I think I'll live with it. <laughs> and uh, But then after three, four months, they kept calling me and saying, well, will you come back? And I said, well, I'm not going to go into Chicago. So now I'm just doing the whole suburban area here. And so it's not so bad. Oh, so I it's like it. driving around the neighborhood. I love it. <laughs> and I, you know... I always take the back roads. So you get to see some so of the countryside, huh? <laughs> Speaking of com countryside and back to the farm, what kind of crops did you grow on the farm? Well, it was mostly corn and uh, oats and some wheat and hay. And was all of, how much of this was used on the farm for the animals and what was sold for cash? Everything was used on the farm except if we had a good hay crop, my dad would sell some to a man in Chicago that would come out with a big truck and he would sell it to the racetrack. And then just a surplus hay, but that's all. And this racetrack you're talking about is Arlington Park? The Arlington, Arlington track, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, and then um, 1933, 34, we had this awful drought. And remember the reading about the dust storms? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the dust storms would be so bad that the state would have to take their snow plows and plow the dust off the road. Mm -hmm. It would pile up just like snow. That's how bad the dust storms were. And of course, we had no crops either. Mm -hmm. And that happened so here in Schomburg, too. That oh. was happening in Schomburg oh, yeah. in 1933, 34. Oh, sure. sure. And uh, so then. 1934, 3rd of July, a big tornado went through. It started here in Dundee, mm -hmm. and it hit your dad's place, remember? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> remember. She wasn't that. here, but was yeah. she knows but, that it did. Told. But, you know, like Fingston's barn went down across mm -hmm. the road, right. and uh, there were probably about 16 or 17 barns all went down. Now, this is Fingston. that's at Nergy Road and uh, Rolling Road. Meacham Road. Meacham. Meacham Road, um, the northwest Be corner of what now is Beasterfield, Beaster, it's called Beasterfield now. Yeah. Beasterfield. 
and Meacham Road, the yeah. northwest corner. Yeah. Where the Kmart is. Yeah. Where the Kmart oh. is now. Okay. Right. So then uh, it's, yeah. So then it went back. It started up. The tornado started here. Oh, it started in tornado. Went all the way through Schaumburg, mm -hmm. and took about 16, 17 of the great big barns down. But we had so much hail with it, the hail piled up like like snow. Like a foot. And you know, around July, the corn would be you know about this high. Mm -hmm. You look at a cornfield, you couldn't even tell it was, was even a stalk of corn left. There was mm -hmm. just nothing. It was just shredded. Mm -hmm. and, and this isn't just where the tornado was. This is this the was whole all over. area. See, it didn't. We lived farther north of the tornado. It mm -hmm. didn't hit our, but mm -hmm. the uh, hail did all the damage, and we had everything was destroyed. Mm -hmm. And that's when soybeans came in. Okay. See, and in July, you could still put in soybeans and still have like a hay crop by fall. Okay. And so that's when soybeans came into this area and we all planted soybeans so that at least we'd have some hay mm -hmm. for the cattle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so ever since then, people, the farmers have been used planting soybeans also. And did you rotate your crops? Oh, yes. Yes. See, and all our manure went back on the land. Mm -hmm. So we'd never bought fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So there was, yeah, you recycled, you recycled every, everything. everything that yes. you possibly could. Sure. Mm -hmm. See, today the farmers are ruining the land. They don't put any humus or mm -hmm. vegetation back in the ground, and they use all these strong poisonous sprays to put on the ground. They kill all the worms. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Plus all the fertilizer that they put on, and mm -hmm. you know, there's that is why today our food is lacking in nutrition. There's nothing in it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, stopping and thinking back to the tornado, even though it did not harm any buildings on your farm. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in helping any of the other farmers oh, yeah. rebuild barns or oh, my, yes. repairing or yeah. whatever? Yeah. yeah, see, Finkston, Mrs. Finkston was my mother's cousin. So my dad went over and helped over there. Mm -hmm. And of course I helped also, mm -hmm. you know, to clean right. up. I mean, gosh, the lumber was laying all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And trees were down. Or? Oh, and trees were down. So then See, you and, would cut and, the trees and, and the you'd use it, right? And the hail was so bad it took all the paint off of off of our buildings. Mm -hmm. It just no paint left at all. So it was mm -hmm. like sandpaper. Yeah. Like sandpaper. Yep. Um, then how long? How much time did it take for everyone to, you know, get their farm back where they could actually work the farm oh, instead the of next, the next year? Then. So it was they the were still. Year. You did. Immediate, uh, like emergency type things, things where a, a farmer wouldn't be able to do things on his own. He yeah. did where a lot of people would have to be required yeah, and be then the, let the him pick it year. up. Mm -hmm. And then they got the soybean crop in so they yeah. could get to And uh, some food of course, you know, it took uh, time to rebuild the barns. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so everybody. And you would use your soybean for your livestock or you would yes, use this? For the okay, dairy so cows. it wasn't for sale. No, no, um, okay. no, no. Unless you had food. a surplus, but it was yes. for food. Yes. All right. And then um, what did you, you you said you did have a silo. What did you put in your silo? Corn. Um, Just all It was corn. all broken, a whole corn or the broken? Whole, the whole stock, everything. Chopped up. Yeah. Oh, it'd you chopped, chopped it up. up. It'd be chopped okay. up. Okay. Uh -huh. Did you have to uh, put it in the silo in any particular way? No, you just see, we... Uh, we put a runner through a silage cutter, you know, okay. we could, or corn cutter, and then there were, uh, it would be run with a tractor, mm -hmm. and uh, then there was a uh, propeller, probably about oh this high, mm -hmm. in the machine. See, and uh, when the tractor was running, that propeller would just really go fast, and as that corn was being cut up, it would hit this propeller and then blow it up. This this little in that pipe okay and then it would drop it off in the silo okay and then how would you get your the silage out out well on the right towards the barn then uh, there'd be some steps mm -hmm. you know you'd have to crawl all the way up there like a ladder yeah like a ladder, a ladder. 
and then you'd have to go all the way up there, and with a fork, you'd have to throw it down. So you'd have to get inside the silo? Yes. And you'd have to pitch it out through the same hole that you came in? Yes. Yes. Actually, right. there were doors. See, sure. there, were, right. there were doors you would about slide like, the door, like door. this, and then as your silage went down, you'd take your door out and mm -hmm. then... And shift it mm -hmm. to wherever, and then you would just drop it down that same chute. Yes, and then at so the bottom. So, by the time you got down to the bottom, you were not always clean. You were smelly. Smelling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And slippery. You yes. made them not slippery. No. Just not, not it so much. Get, no, but no. it did have quite an odor. Yes. It fermented. Cow like, cows like it, right? Oh. Oh, they loved it. <laughs> uh, was it ever your job to go in the silo when they were blowing it in? Yes. To tamp it down? Yes. Yeah. And you, see, the silo was probably about 15 feet in diameter. So uh, we had pipes and that, you know, as it came down, and then you would take the pipe and just kind of move it around so that you would level it. And why did you have to level it? Oh, otherwise, if you just dropped it down, then the heavier parts of your corn would stay right in the center, mm -hmm. and then the leaves would blow to the outside, and, and you didn't want that. You wanted it all distributed. Yeah. And you didn't want it because it would get rotten. Yes. See, and then... And if mildew. it were just the leaves on the outside, that would dry out mm -hmm. faster, okay. much faster. Okay, so you level it up. Yeah. You have another I have question. another question. You know, one of the scariest times I ever had when our silo was empty, and it was probably about 40, 45 feet high, yeah. most of them, I guess. Well, my dad sent me up there to, uh, you know, adjust the pipes, and we had a board that went across, you know, on top, mm -hmm. and I had to, and the board was only about this wide, and I had to crawl across there, and I was about 10 years old, and then look down there, and it's all empty. <laughs> and cement. <laughs> oh, I never did it again. <laughs> when I just you, about froze right there. <laughs> you, uh, when you did your manuring and stuff for your cows, you would um, you would use all your uh, cow manure for your fields. Yes. It all went to your fields. All went on. You the never field. used it anywhere else. Oh no, no. Cow manure, chicken manure, hog manure, everything mm -hmm. went on the farm. It all went horse. And you, horse manure. And you would have a manure spreader too that yes. you would take. You would hitch up behind one of the sure. horses and stuff. Sure. Right. Sure. And yeah. did you enjoy the job of loading that manure on the horse? <laughs> no. <laughs> Chicken manure, that was the worst of all. Oh, on a hot summer day. On a hot summer day, and it be, it's the nitrogen in the chicken manure, and oh, you could hardly breathe. Oh, is that what makes it so hard to breathe? Yes, the it's ammonia. A, it's a nitrogen. Oh. You get oh, wonderful ammonia now, I, now I understand. Who was in charge of the chickens? Speaking of chickens. What? Me. Who, you were in charge? Said. Yeah. At eight years old, my dad says, you're in charge. 200, remember? 200. I, I remember, but forever? Your mother never had to deal with the chickens? Oh, she never did, no. Oh, I'll tell you another thing about that chicken deal. Yes. My mother got all the money. Oh, she that, did? <laughs> that was all her money. <laughs> well, who had to clean the eggs? Me. I had to do everything. So how did you clean these eggs? You get water. you get them in there dirty, right? No, I would take some cold water, mm -hmm. and, and it, most of the time the eggs were okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they were dirty, I'd put them in the cold water and didn't leave them in there too long, and they just scrub them till you mm -hmm. get them clean. Mm -hmm. And then you just put them in some kind of a crate and take them in to mom, or did you have to put them someplace where it was oh, we, cold? Oh, we we uh, we had egg cases where we mm -hmm. we egg just put them in it. right away. Mm -hmm. So then when the customers came out on Saturday, they mm -hmm take the whole case. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as I said, my mother got all the egg money and she used it for groceries and clothes, you know, and for us for yeah. and for my dad. Mm -hmm. And I loved to hunt. I, you know, even at that age. And I told my mom, I said, you're getting all the egg money. I said, I'm doing all the work. I said, I would like to have a gun for hunting. Yes. And what did mother say? And she says, sure, why not? And what kind of gun did Norm get? I still have it here. In the, I got a 410 shotgun. And who made it? By what manufacturer? Do you Sears. 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 And we went to Elgin, and okay. Elgin had a little Sears store up on a hill. 
and I went right to the gun area and I picked out my 410 and I just loved hunting. And what did you hunt? Pheasants, mostly. We had loads and loads of pheasants at that time and partridges and rabbits. Well, where would you do this hunting? Oh, right on the farm. Right on your farm. Oh, yeah. So in the the um, fall, in the fall on the hedgerows and stuff, you oh, would find all, all these. See, and, and then uh, years ago we had some low land, mm -hmm. and today they would drain it. Mm -hmm. But you know, then the grass would grow this high, and that the pheasants That's in the evening would go into that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would we had forty acres on the where the, the new place was, you know, I said where oh, they... over on the uh, east side of Meacham Road, south of the toll yeah, road. Yeah, and then this was also north of the toll road. It's still empty land right oh, now. Oh, yeah. It's, that uh, was my dad's 40 acres. Yeah, okay, and the uh, Schomburg uh, Water Department has that now for a well there. Uh-huh. Anyway, I would have to drive the cows along the road and then into the 40 acres because there was mostly pasture land back there. Okay. And then in the evening I'd have to get them back again. And uh, then I'd take my 410 along and I'd always go the long way. And my dad would get so mad, he says, what have you been doing again? Hunting? I said, yeah, but I got two pheasants here. <laughs> oh, and that was good. That was all right. That was good. That was good. Have you cleaned the pheasants? Oh, I did. You did? Yeah. Oh, and then another thing in summer, we would raise about 200 what we would call uh, pullets mm -hmm. or, um, um, oh gosh, now I can't think of the name, roosters. And uh, when they get to be about three, four pounds, we would sell them also to these uh, Italians that would get the eggs. But I had to do all of the killing. I had to chop their heads off, clean them. So how did you do that? Did you lay them down on a block and go and just no, cut their I head off? Put them, put them between my legs and I chopped the head okay, off. Okay, and then let them do their let thing. Them let them run around. <laughs> so you just be sitting on on something and do it, or would you no, be I'd standing stand. up? Okay, I'd stand. and bending over and. So how long would it take you to take the heads off of? I mean, oh, how long would they take? Oh, just just a second. You know. But you, uh, but <laughs> did, you did you do a lot at one time? Oh, probably 10, 12. And, and then, uh, see, I would heat some water. We had a copper boiler, mm -hmm. and I'd heat the water real hot, and then you'd dip them in there, mm -hmm. just not too long. Mm -hmm. That smells then so the, good, too. And you had, I mean, you leave them in too long, then the skin would come off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have to take all the feathers off, and then I'd have to clean the insides. Mm -hmm. And... Get them all washed Did up. Did you burn the pin feathers off? No, let's see, at that time they didn't have the pin feathers. Okay. They'd be beyond that. Okay. And then, um, so then what would you do with all this residual stuff, the feathers and the, well, the guts back, and stuff like that? Go back that? on the land. So you just kind of throw it out and then sure. you turn it in and yeah, I'd put it, it on break a down. Manure spreader. The manure spreader. Get out on the land. Mm -hmm. sure. And then, um, they would come, these people would come and buy it from you and you'd yes. have them in a box or a bag or sure. sack or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never took any of your chickens or your roosters out to a farm stand or anything like that? Did you no. ever have a farm stand? No. Did your Uncle Emil no. ever have a farm stand? No. no. None of us did. Okay. No. All right. And of course then when I got into 4-H... Mm -hmm. uh, Is that the same 4-H that Levon was in? No. I was in the Girls of Schaumburg. Okay. And yeah. I'm sure that Norm was not in the <laughs> Girls of Schaumburg. <laughs> no, so I was beyond he might have liked to have been so in the four Girls of Schaumburg. So 4-H was split up by the boys and the girls? No, we had, we had both, even when I was in. All right, but yeah. each project that you would work on would well, be see, all, all the Since I was things. in charge of the chickens, I decided to, you know, show my chickens at the mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, where would the fair be? Be all the way down in Lagrange, southern end of Cook County. Oh, okay. And uh, it was okay. it was a big all day affair. Okay. And uh, there was a young girl there also showed chickens, but you know she didn't really. She would uh, take her chickens and the day before she'd wash them real nice, you know, and that's all she did. Mm -hmm. But I took care of my chickens the whole year. Well, I wound up with the blue ribbons, and she didn't. You know, she wound up with third and fourth. But this little girl happens to be my wife today. 
Oh, really? Whoa. I knew where we were going with this. I knew. When she wasn't doing the job the way she should have done that there was going to be a slam dunk here. That was. But there sure. must have been something about that little girl. I have a question about her. We said well, she knew me way before. She yeah. says, who's this Norm Frazee? But I didn't know her. Oh. What was her, what's her mom and dad's name? Bussy. His first name? Adolf. Adolf? And, um... Oh, Chris, also, Christina. Christina. Yeah. Adolf and Christina. And where was their farm? On Algonquin Road, mm -hmm. east of 58, you know, where 58 crosses yeah. Algonquin, and west of Arlington Heights Road. Okay. And they were about in the center. Today... North or south side? On the north side. Okay. And today, the uh, Pace has their buses right there. Okay, that's where the farm buildings were. Okay. All right, good. Because I knew that when you said busy, then, I uh, oh, well, we only have uh, 2,500 of those that we have to try to <laughs> figure out which to. one this is. Yeah. All right. What else did you have in 4-H? Did you only have chickens? That's all I had. That's all you used. Yes. Specialized in chickens. Yes. Did and you, where were your meetings held? Oh, in Palatine. And who was your 4-H leader? Uh, a fellow by the name, he was our, our agriculture teacher by the name of Howell. And he is still living and he's probably about 90 years old oh my goodness. or older. Where does he live now, do you know? He lives in uh, DeKalb. Oh my How does he spell his name? H-O-W-E-L-L. E-L-L. -L. How did you get your mail? Did you have to go in and get your mail? No. We had it delivered, mm -hmm. but then we had to go about well, three-quarter mile to pick it up. So they delivered it at Higgins Road there, at the end of it your road? It was north of Higgins Road. By your uncle's house? By my uncle's... Uh, Drive. See, then, by then, Meacham Road was there. Mm -hmm. So then between my uncle Emil and Uncle Edwin and us, we had the three mailboxes there. Mm. When was Meacham Road put through? I about. Was a, uh, about 1925. And that's when 58 also was put in. Okay. And uh, they had about 60 team of mule. They had no modern equipment, you know, no tractors mm -hmm. to uh, move the earth. And they used all these mules. And the guy would stand there with the scoop with the, those handles and scoop up the dirt and take it somewhere else. And that's how the roads were built. And originally was uh, that... Gravel road? Oh, nothing. No, they. It was your farm. It was our farm. I, I mean, when they made the road, when they were making it, after they did the dirt, did they just leave it dirt or did they put gravel? No, they it? put, uh, then they made cement right they away. Made cement. They made right. cement all oh, right away. Well, where would they put these mules up? Where would, where would the mules stay at night? Overnight? Oh, they'd, they'd have to stay in their pasture. All right, so yeah, each farmer. We, yeah, each farmer. The farmers, wherever they were, they would let them run in the pasture. So when they were actually building this road, they were taking property away from you to do this? No, right? they did pay my dad, but it was mm -hmm. very nominal right. and then, amount of money. So you but got we some money. Glad. <laughs> we right, because you could go down a, a block oh, now yes. and be on, yeah. the, on the road. Right. And then your job was then to change where your, um, if you had pasture land there and you had a fence, you'd have to change where your positioning of your fence oh, yeah. was. Oh, sure. So is that something that you did after they put the road yeah, in, or yeah. you knew they were coming and so actually you put your they fence in? Th uh, they didn't take any of our fence lines. Mm -hmm. So no, it's just wherever they, you know, across the road we had to change things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand. And then how long would that? How long did that take for them to extend? When they extended Meacham from Higgins Road, did they extend it then to Algonquin Road? No, they went right through the woods, you know, Plum Grove Woods. Oh, okay. They, they went so they right, continued they, further they continued. up towards Palatine. Yeah, see, they, they had to take all the trees down. Uh huh. See, and most of that woodland was owned by one man. His name was Wilt Hagen. Wilt Hagen. And, uh, I guess the, uh, well, it but was that's a state, that's, it's a, in Palatine Township. Yeah, it was a state road, mm -hmm. and I guess they had to condemn the land to get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, and then how long, how much time did it take them to go? So this would have been that they took it up to like where Plum Grove Road blended mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
because Plumgo Road was there. Yes. Right, that yes. was there. And then Meacham was carried up up to that point. How long did it take for the, these mule teams to do that job? About two years. It took two oh, years, yeah. and only summertime. Yes. Only oh, summer. Yes, only, yeah. And oh, so yes, summer yeah. would have been really like spring when it was dry enough. When it got dry enough, they'd work, and then all the way till fall until. As Which long might as have been could. November until sure. it froze up. Until right. things froze up. Yes. And so they would scoop this up, and they would take this extra dirt for whatever the hills that they went sure. through, and they um, take that someplace else, wherever that was. Yeah, to fill right. in the lowland. All right, and then. Did they put ditch, uh, drainage ditches and stuff oh, on yeah, the side they, then too? So they that was put part the of the road. In. They okay. put culverts in. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. See, but when they went through Plum Grove Woods, they had to cut down all those trees. Mm -hmm. That was a big and, job. And, and the pull bridge, up. the bridge over the creek. Mm -hmm. And that bridge down. Which they are widening. Are they finally? Oh. Um, the did you did you have to deal with? Um, uh, cow paths under the high, under the road at all, or no, so no, you didn't. continue just to get to your to your section that was north of the tollway no. that wasn't there at that time, right? Yeah, that wasn't there. Um, to get to north that north section, you would just kind of walk your cows over each other. We walk them then. along the road until you got to where you had to cross yeah. over and you cross sure. over. Yeah. What See, about and there wasn't what much traffic at that time. Mm -hmm. There'd well, be occasionally a couple cars would come. But you know, I had a dog. It was the best dog I ever had. And it was a dog that I saw somebody throw out the car. See, years ago, people did uh, that. Well, they still do, I think. Mm -hmm. And I went over and I picked up the dog and it was just a pup. And, you know, that dog would go from behind the cows and side and he'd keep them on one side of the road. All the time. So, so if a car came help. along, they, they had the extra yeah. lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a big help. Uh, I was. I had a question that was about. While you're thinking, uh, were there any springs on your farmland? Oh yeah, we had one out there on the 40 acres. That's why we could keep the cows out there during the day. This is on that north side. Yes. That's why Schomburg has the well there. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, my dad was drilling a, a well and we went down a hundred feet and all of a sudden it's just like an oil well it just gushed, gushed out and uh, so we finally capped it and then you know put a pipe out and that kept running all the time we had a big tank there for the cows mm -hmm. and uh, this property that we're talking about over there it's by the Ron Santos building did your property go all the way up to Algonquin Road no so it went up to like that little road that goes into Mo Motorola. Well, it's the vacant land that you see there. Oh, okay. That's all. I mean, that's the only vacant land that there is. All right. So that's right at the street where uh, the where the entrance is to Motorola and Ron Santos is there and Mother Hubbard's was the original. I think it was Mother Hubbard's that was the original restaurant yes. that's north of the property that uh, that Norm calls. Pasture. The north, the north pasture. Yes, pasture huh? yeah. And it was fenced. That area oh, yes. was fenced. Oh, sure, sure, mm -hmm. sure. It was there any peat? It was peat ground. Yeah. Okay. You know when see it, and when a toll road came through, see they came just north of our mm -hmm. buildings at that time. Mm -hmm. And the peat ground was on the uh, eastern edge of our property. Mm -hmm. See the the land went down and it was yeah. all peat ground. And in fact, it caught fire one year and it burned all oh, the whole summer. Mm -hmm. But when the toll road came through, they dug out all the peat ground and they went down about 20 feet. Well, then they put in all gravel, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to fill it yeah. in. The next morning, the gravel was down about 10 feet and the peat raised up on both sides up in the air. <laughs> They didn't go down far enough, you know, to, to take, take the, the peat ground out. out. Here they had to take all the gravel out again, and then they had to go 10, 15 feet deeper. When they built this tollway, 
It was going through your farm, right? Yes, when they built that it. forty acres there. That forty acres, and what about on the north side of where your homestead property was? Was that part of your farm, or is that somebody that was part of your yes, farm, yeah. or your part of your uncle John's no, no, farm? No, no, our farm. Your farm. Mm -hmm. So what happened? What what kind of? Um, I mean, how much time did your parents know ahead of time that this road was going to go through their farm? Probably about a year. And what were their thoughts about that? Well, we really felt. Uh, I th we felt it was needed. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. nothing you could do about no, it. No, so we couldn't do anything about it. Go with it. the flow. No. And then, um, so you knew it was coming, and then how much time did they actually spend, like, right in your section there? Did they spend a year or two years, or what did oh, they spend? Oh, gosh. You know, they had different contractors. You know, they would give a contractor about eight miles, and they'd mm -hmm. say, this is your section. Mm -hmm. And I would say they got it done within a year, year and a half. And where did these men stay, when the ones that were working there? Did they stay with people on the farm, or did no, they go? Not, no, maybe see, when the toll road came through, that was um, around the early 50s, mm -hmm. and they could stay at motels, or, mm -hmm. or some of the people were local, local people. Local contractors. Sure, local contractors. Your parents were still um, operating the dairy then? No, no, no. No, no. so you no, weren't operating? That's, that's when I moved in with my dad. Okay. My mother had died. Okay. See, and then we had. Then my dad said, "Well, I'm going to build the new house anyway." See, they were going to retire on that 40 acres. Mm -hmm. Well, my mother died in the meantime, and so then we moved over there in the new place with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then after five years, my dad remarried, and I didn't want to stay there because mm -hmm. Meacham Road. They built that up right in yeah. front of our house, you know, and you couldn't even look out the... You're talking about the new houses that, the new house that he built that's on the east side of Meacham Road, just south of the tollway, yeah. just as the hill starts to rise up to go over the tollway, is where the barn was, the barn and the house. The house okay. and the barn, yeah. All right. Yeah. Later on so today, then we'll take a picture. My dad uh, moved out, he moved to Elgin then. And uh, my wife and I stayed probably another year, and then we had this home built. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, your father sold the, the farm? Then he sold it. Then he sold yeah. it. And was it still under field then? You were still working fields up until that time that yeah, you the sold name, it? Yeah, uh, Uncle John's son was uh, working it. He was working it. Mm -hmm. okay. So you weren't doing the farm work, no. you were doing your driving work. Yeah. And you were living in the house, keep that house the house mm -hmm. occupied. You still had your farm equipment and all there? Or did you auction that oh, yeah. off already? He, yeah, it was still he, there? He had some in the barn. He didn't have much equipment then, just a tractor. And mm -hmm. Did you have things. a farm auction? He didn't even sell it at an auction. Oh. He just sold it privately. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, See, and there's a... Uh, I planted some willow trees where that well was, you know, I said there was right. flowing. Mm -hmm. That one willow tree is still down there. <laughs> All right, now how far back from Meacham Road is it? How well, Meacham Road is probably about uh, a thousand feet. Okay. You see one willow tree. Oh, then. so there aren't others there, there's just this one, do you yeah. think? Okay, now I'll spot that. We'll put that on the tape at the end of the tape. Yeah. <laughs> Later on yeah. in the day, baby. And then, like I said, all the other trees that are still standing there, I planted every Around one of the them. Bond, you <laughs> planted those. Now, and you bought them, or you dug them up from other places on the property? I, uh, and put I them bought in? some of the trees over here, mm -hmm. and the rest I just left there. Mm -hmm. And then all these big trees here, now they they were just little ones like this when I planted them. Yeah. We're here um, 43 years. So now these yes. are all big trees. <laughs> grown wonderfully. Um, when you were a teenager or when you were a young adult, what kinds of entertainment was there for you to do? What well, did you do for entertainment? I loved to ride a horse, and I still had my saddle, and I loved to hunt, so I did all of that. And uh, then we'd, on, on Sunday night, we'd always go to Elk Grove Inn, and they had a dance over there. And all the kids from all around would be there. That was at Higgins Road and Arlington Heights Road? No. it was, was that? No, it was east of Arlington. Arling no, it was uh, west of Arlington Heights Road. 
East, oh. east of Rolling Road, east of 53. It was east of Rolling Road yeah, okay. and west of Arlington Heights Road. All right, on the, on the south, south side of you the know, street. You know where the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, there, there are several bridges uh -huh. on 72? It was just a little bit east of that. Okay. And they called it Elk Grove Inn. Elk Grove Inn. And, uh, in fact, my brother-in-law, well, they had a, a band there of about six, seven pieces. And my brother-in-law always played in the band, and Chris's brother. brother. And what did he play? He played the uh, bass violin. Bass violin. In uh, fact, in fact, he just died about a month ago. Mm -hmm. He was 80, 82. <laughs> Do you remember the name of their their band? Did they have a name? Oh, it was Hanfeld. 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 Yeah, they came from Arlington Heights. H U N T. H A M F E L D T. Okay. Hanfeld. Okay. okay. All right. And, and that was a must. Everybody went everybody there. Went. And that's how you got to meet so many young people. So who was your first date? What? Who who'd you take out on your first date? Oh gosh. It's <laughs> called <laughs> put on the thinking cap. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, I I think I dated somebody in high school, you know, like oh. the prom and oh, okay. and uh, but that's I didn't really start dating until I was out of high school, mm -hmm. you know, to date different girls. And we'd date somebody we'd meet at the dance. Mm -hmm. That's where I met my wife. And it was more like, come on, let's go. Yeah. It wasn't like I'll take you out for a date. No, no, no. Or I'll take you home. <laughs> so who got your first kiss? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, there. Probably. Yes, of there were so many. <laughs> was Mr. There, personality. Yes. <laughs> was there a group, a youth group at church? Yes, Walter League. Walter League. Were yeah, you, did you participate? Us, in no, that? we were busy with that. And our Walter League, we played basketball. We played baseball in summer. How Where was there a baseball field? Oh, we would we would play different churches. Oh, okay. And we'd let be Sunday afternoon. Oh. See, and one, dis one disadvantage we had, my brother and I, after the baseball game, we'd have to come home and milk the cows. Oh. And the other kids would go to Crystal Lake and go swimming. Oh. And that's why I said I'll never be a farmer. <laughs> at least not a dairy farmer. <laughs> yeah. It's not a dairy farmer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have. Um, we did asked you how you went to school, how you actually got to the school. How did you get to church? Did you take your same road down to 72 and then go up 72? Yes, and then Meacham, and then we took Schomburg West. Oh, Schomburg. So you didn't go over to Plum Grove Road on Higgins. You went over to Meacham yep. and went that That's way. Right. So then you would pass by the, uh, you would turn at the Redeker Farm. the Redeker Farm. And then you would... Go yeah. west, and go west, and Miller's yes. lived on the farm just north. Okay, that first farm, like yeah. right across the street from yeah. Spring Valley, that was the yes. Miller farm? that's right. What was his first name? Do you remember? Bill. Bill Miller. Bill Miller. Good, I remember his farm. Yeah. I, re I moved in when yeah. it was still there. He got, actually he died, he fell out of a tree. You know. Oh. I didn't know that. Didn't and his property was his property then sold to the Brock family. Is that how uh, the Helen Brock people got hold of that property? Um. Yeah, I don't know if that was his farm or not. Oh, okay. I'm but sure. his was the first entrance on the right hand side yes, then. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. And then you. Yeah, his land came right up to Meacham and uh, Schomburg Road. Okay. Yeah. Well, it shows on the map. On this mm -hmm. other map, this aerial, and um, uh, did you know the Kern, the Kern family at all? Oh yeah. So, and how many? There were there were several Kern brothers, right? Yeah, there were I think two or three mm -hmm. of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the house that's up, that's still there now, the big white house. Yeah. Whose house was that? Do you know? Oh, I think they had that built. Mm -hmm. Um. What kind? What kind of farmers were they? Did they just raise horses? Oh, they uh, just ra just had horses. That's it. That's it. So sure. they bought all their feed and yeah. had that all brought in and 
you know. So, uh, and the horses. Well, no, see, they had all that acreage there. They had a farmer working for them. Okay. Oh, yeah, he did all the cutting of hay and. Okay. And but then, that's all they really raised was hay for the horses. And that was for the horses. And they raised the horses for purposes of thoroughbred racing? Yes. Okay. What else do you have? Because we have a time thing here, don't we? Yeah, we do. And I don't know how's your team doing. I wouldn't say I came from Schaumburg. No. You said you came from Palatine because that's where you got your mail, right? And I went to school there. And you went to school there. <laughs> and I said but, I came know, from Roselle because I didn't want to nobody say I came knew, from Schaumburg. Nobody knew where Schaumburg was. Schaumburg was. Mm. Ironically, in Palatine High School District now, there are only two high schools in Palatine and three in Knocker County. <laughs> ah, yes! yes! Well, so not that I'm that editorial comment. <laughs> we are on, are we? Yeah. <laughs> we got to be on because we were talking about Palatine. Oh, All right. Um, it's okay. I like yeah. you too. <laughs> Did you ever hear of any ghosts at Schomburg Center? Any what? Ghosts. Ghosts? Yes, G H O S T. No. 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 Okay. No. See? I, no. What All about right. Prohibition? Oh, that we can save that. Okay, prohibition we'll talk about later. We'll talk about some politics, maybe. We'll talk about um, loans, banking things. We'll talk about um, uh, voting, how you went about voting. The mechanics of it, not so much. The what? The mechanics of where did you go to vote? Oh, voting. Vote. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what kinds of special things do we have to do about taxes, you know, for... Uh, agricultural tax, like uh, Winklehawk is used, uh, and to talk about specific other families that we Did know you talk of. to uh, this, what's his first name, Winklehockey? I talked to Ron Winklehockey a long time ago, but I haven't talked to Lewis, okay. but he's up in Milwaukee, and I did take pictures of his farm. Well, the Winklehockey family that lived at uh, Plum Grove Road in 72, yeah, right at the point, at the homestead. Yeah. yeah. Okay, one of them still lives in Roselle, doesn't he? No, he, no, that's Ron. Ron Winklehockey died in December of a he heart attack. He to Jefferson City. Oh. And he had just moved. He was and, in my high school class. And, um, well, I mean, that, no, the older Winklehockey. Herman. Herman. His father died two years earlier than that in, on, uh, right at Thanksgiving time. Yeah, but then Herman's brother, what's his name? L Lewis, and he's up in um, Milwaukee. Uncle Lewis. No, there's still another one. And there's a cousin Lewis. Well, there is. Um, there were two brothers lived on the farm. Yeah. One died. One died. And one's in Milwaukee. One yeah. moved. Well, he moved? Yeah. I just saw him here at my brother in law's funeral. I didn't know that he moved. Older man, right? Yeah, well, he's older than I am. Yeah. Well, you're talking about Uncle Lewis, who would be well, like Louis, huh? 80s, 90s. Oh. And then there's Cousin Lou, who I would think would be more of your age. Well, you know who I'm thinking of? Um, Casney. Now, there's a... Now, do you know the Castings at all? There's yeah, only Albert. one brother left. Albert. Huh? Albert. Al. Al. And Adelia. No, that's uh, Let's see, spoiler, Al, no, I later? think Al died. No, Al's alive. Werner died. Werner died. Okay, Alice, all right. Alice, I saw and, Al. Alice and Roselle. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. They I live in Roselle. See, now he's older than yeah, I am. Yeah, because his sister was married. His sister Lorraine was married to a Bussy. Ed Bussy. No, no. Lorraine was married to a Scamahorn. Yeah, I take that back. You're right. Um, I have that. Oh, okay, but Not Marge, right. Marge Casting was married to my brother-in-law. Yeah. The one that just died. Right. Yeah, I knew Marge real well. See, and then she died when she was only about 32, 33 years old. What did she die from? Cancer. From cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all these are people that we want to talk to. Yeah. All these people. And we're getting there. We're getting oh, there. by the time you get all this put together. No, we're just, <laughs> we don't want to editorialize. We don't want to give a slant. We don't want to take what you said and put it in our words. We just wanted 
like it is. Uh, Even my comment about the high schools. <laughs> about the high school. Oh, that's the show of Pride of Schomburg. That's all. That's it. It's not an editorial comment about profession. No, not at all. <laughs> Had a wonderful experience in Palatine High School. All right, are we closing now, up? Have you no, ever close up. contacted okay. my aunt, Renata, Edwin's wife? No. Do you know where she lives? Oh, she's in a nursing home. Um, she's in a nursing home in Schaumburg somewhere. What is she, who is she married to? She was married to Uncle Ed. Edwin? Edwin, yeah. But uh -huh. he, you know, she's the only aunt we have left. Are they the ones that had the farmstead where the water top, Woodfield Water Tower yes, is? Yes, yes. Okay. And she is a Winkle Hockey, right? Yes. Yeah. And no, uh, she's know. at Arden Courts, and her Dolores, uh, her Dolores star, is the daughter. daughter Dolores is the contact. Yeah. And they had a Willard, a Harold, and Dolores. Yes. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's the question that I was going to ask. How are, are you related? So... Edwin is your uncle. uncle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's your your father's brother. He was the youngest brother. The father's youngest brother. Okay.